welcome you back to Texas Tech, the mask rider, the mascot of Texas Tech. We are at SBC, Jones SBC Stadium on a cool night. And of course, Texas Tech, the number one passing offense, and they have some of the top receivers in the country. With more on that, here's Craig Sager. Sags. Well, we're going into the fifth game of the season, and going into today, believe it or not, but five of the top 12 receivers in the country were Texas Tech's teammates. This is an unbelievable statistic. But remember, this team throws the ball 60 times a game. And Jared Hicks, Nehemiah Glover, Torian Henderson, Trey Haverty, and Cody Fuller all have between 21 and 39 catches on the year. But don't tell them that it's just a product of the system. In fact, in tonight's jerseys, underneath they have a T-shirt with a message to Nebraska. If it's a system, we dare to play you man. It's an interesting challenge, but even with Nebraska's talented black shirt defense, they won't accept it. They'll divide the field into a zone. Ron? All right, thanks very much, Craig. You'll be roaming the sidelines throughout the game, and Mike Leach is already upset. We haven't even kicked off yet. Nebraska won the toss, and you can see in his fifth season, and they will be receiving the kickoff, and Mike Leach trying to get some of his players over. Mike Leach, one of the most interesting head coaches you will ever meet in college football, the former, former rugby player from BYU. We'll be talking about Mike as we go throughout the telecast. And of course, Bill Callahan in his first year, the head coach of the Nebraska Cornhuskers. And Mike is still upset on the sideline. I don't know if he's upset about what happened with the coin toss. He's trying yeah. to get the referee's attention. That's who he wants to talk to right now. So hopefully we can find out exactly what got Mike so excited before kickoff. Too good. Is set to kick it away. With the win, and this is going to go about five yards deep into the end zone. Green's going to take a seat. And that's where Nebraska will take over. Let's take a look at this Nebraska offense. Bill Callahan said it's on the verge of exploding. Joe Daly, the sophomore from Jersey City, New Jersey. Charles, nobody has more pressure on him right now than Joe Daly does for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. I agree with that totally because he's the guy who's initiating a brand new offensive system at Nebraska, the West Coast offense, and everyone wants it to be perfect right now. His 11 interceptions has frustrated many of the Nebraska backers, but he's a guy who puts in a lot of time in the film room and studying. He's done very well. Bill Callahan, his coach, has the utmost confidence in him. And as you said, Ron, he thinks they're on the verge of a breakout. He thinks that Joe Daly is going to be the guy to lead them there. Well, he's not backing off throwing the football. He says, I'm not trying to put square pegs into round holes. See a lot of this shifting tonight from Nebraska, a lot of motion. And we have penalty flags already, and it's going to go against Nebraska. They were jumping around on the line. Our referee tonight, John Lorry. 77 offense, five yards, remains first down. Solid Big 12 officiating crew tonight. Big Seppo, Evraye, former defensive lineman, turned over offensive lineman. He's the guy who jumped for Nebraska. First and 15 for the Huskers on their own 15-yard line. Pilkington in motion. They'll keep it on the ground with Ross. Gets a little bit of running room up over the 20 to the 21. Ball's loose. And I think Nebraska may have fallen back on top of it. Let's take a look at our U.S. Army of One starting lineups. The rest of this Nebraska offense on the line. Keep an eye on Kurt Mann, the center. He's just a sophomore out of Grand Island, Nebraska. He has solidified this offensive line. And to the running back spot, Corey Ross. Lost weight, gotten faster. Three 100-yard rushing games already this season. He wanted to get rid of his nickname is what he wanted to do, Joe. You know? Talk about pork chop. Pork chop. That's why he lost all that weight. He's leaner. He's stronger. And he's really giving him great production. Couple of tight ends again. First pass for Daly. Pass is complete. First down over the 30-yard line to Dusty Kaiser, the sophomore out of Norfolk, Nebraska. And the Texas Tech defense much improved from the disastrous year they had last season. They'll rotate as many as 10 on the line. Adel Duckett back from injury. He's the best on the line. Linebacking core, Mike Smith, very physical from right here in Lubbock. And the secondary is going to be tested, but Meeks is the playmaker. First and 10 for the Huskers. Opening possession, just 60 seconds gone by. Keep it on the ground with Ross. Big hole left side over the 40. Still on his feet. 
Another first down as he gets over the 45 to the 46 yard line. And right away, we talked about in the open, they haven't given up running the football. In fact, the first meeting of the year for Jay Norvell, offensive coordinator, he said, gentlemen, we're only as good as you, the offensive line. Watch these guys right here blocking, creating a nice crease for Corey Ross. Because when he gets when he gets the ball now, and then after that, he makes it happen. Boom! Look at the impact. That's run after contact. Rack yardage for Nebraska for Ross. Ran right in the, right over Nazir Udin for a 12-yard gain. And they'll keep it on the ground again. Up to midfield. Again, it is Ross. They've cut his touches down a little bit. He's been wearing a green jersey in practice the last few days because he said he's just banged up a little bit, but he's ready to run the football. In fact, the coach is telling us if they want to run him 30 times, he's able to do it. Bill Callahan very high on him. He's a guy that, that you know, they talk about running back by committee, mm -hmm. but they're protecting the bell cow of their running backs, which is Corey right. Ross. He's earned that opportunity. They don't need him getting banged on in practice. He'll get enough of that in the game. Bailey, good play fake, throws, pass, incomplete, no penalty flag is thrown, intended for Ross Pilkington, the junior out of Fort Collins, Colorado, Antonio Huffman on the coverage. Craig Sager, you got an update for us on Coach Leach. Well, not only that, but Texas Tech not off to a good start. First of all, the mass rider is supposed to lead the team onto the field, but in front of this homecoming crowd became a little nervous. The horse never made it out. And then on the coin toss, Nebraska won the toss, elected to defer. Then there was a miscommunication with the Tech captains and the official. Somehow, they thought that they would be kicking the ball. So Nebraska not only got the ball to start this game, but I believe they'll also get it to start the second half. And that's why Mike Leach was so upset. And understandable. Another first down for the Huskers, and they're doing it on the ground. Ross again, just blowing through a big hole, and Fletcher Session has to come up from that linebacker spot to make the stop. Watch Corey Ross getting excellent blocking from his offensive line. Jay Norvell, their offensive coordinator, the first guys he met with on campus when he took the job, the offensive line in Nebraska. And he told them that this offense will be built on your backs. Mm -hmm. We need leadership from you. We need dedication from you. And they're getting excellent play from that offensive line. We're seeing it early tonight. They're just manhandling the front four of Texas Tech. Daily pass right over the middle. Complete down to the 25-yard line. Matt Herrian. The junior out of Pierce, Nebraska. Population 1,774. These are guys that always meet at the car shop. Carl Martinson, the owner down there in Pierce, Nebraska. But now they're not at the car shop watching the game tonight. Yeah, they're over at the Legion Hall. Oh, of course. Yeah, you got so many people watching. You got to get to the Legion Hall, enough space for everyone. Make sure that they're watching young Matt Herrian, who's real close now to going over 1,000 yards in his career and receiving yardage. He's a great ball player, a preseason All-American in a lot of polls. No reason to dispute that now. He needed 12 for 1,000. He has all the tools. Bailey again looking to set up the screen on the left side of Ross and Tech reads it. That'll be a loss of about five on the play. That's just a solid defensive effort by this Texas Tech defense. Last year, if they would have seen the shifting Nebraska done like this, they'd have been so confused. Yeah, they've really come along. Lyle Settensich, their defense coordinator, says they're growing up fast. A screen pass set up for Ross, but watch Randall Cherry, number 84, coming from inside, making his way down the line and chasing down the, the, the screen pass. That's Lyle Settensich. He's the defensive coordinator right there. Big guy checking it all out. He's got a great reputation and is working wonders at Texas Tech. On second and 15, they keep it on the ground. Jackson. The true freshman out of Horn Lake, Mississippi. He's young, but this is a player who's learning every week. He could be one of the next great backs in Nebraska history. He's a guy who struggled to qualify to get to Nebraska. Had got his ACT score late and ended up getting in and then showed up in June to work out with the team and gain their respect. That's why he's able to play as a true freshman. Worked awfully hard, and they've got a package of plays for him, but they know he can run very well. Looking at working hard. This is what Nebraska worked on this week, third down. Bailey's pass into the flat, incomplete. That'll bring up a fourth down situation. And they are, would be kicking into a, a wind, although it looks like it's swirling. Now it looks like it's going from left to right. You can see on top of the uh, goalpost. Well, they really wanted to convert there on third down. You just mentioned how hard they worked on third down all week. Last week against Kansas, three for 12 in third down situations. They really need to get better in that spot. Sandro DeAngelis, the senior out of Niagara Falls with a kick. Up, sliding, hits the goalpost, no good. 
That's the second week in a row he's hit some of the upright. He hit the crossbar against Kansas on a 45 yard and it bounced back at him. This time he hits the right upright. Two weeks in a row he's had bad luck. That's a good start for Texas Tech ultimately. Well, he's now two or five on the year kicking the football, but as we mentioned, the wind is swirling down there, and Texas Tech will take over on their own 25 yard line. This is a high powered Texas Tech offense. Barrett Rue, the linebacker from Nebraska, saying they're just going to dink us and dunk us all night long. Sonny Cumbie's first pass of the evening. Right side, wide open, complete. Cody Fuller on the reception. Sonny Cumbie, the fifth year senior, has been waiting in the wings to take over the job. Number one in total offense, and he's been under a lot of criticism saying, You're no BJ Simmons, you're no Cliff Kingsbury. Unfair criticism. Now, people drive a hard bargain here, don't they? Oh, yeah. Because when you look at Sonny Cumbie's numbers, he leads the NCAA in total offense and in pass yardage. I'd say he's doing quite a good job. He's had some unfortunate tip balls that have turned into interceptions. Mike Leach loves him. He's going to keep running him out there. He thinks he's the guy to run his show. Sonny, the senior out of Snyder, Texas, which is just down the road from Lubbock. A quick pass to the outside again, complete up to the 43-yard line. Nehemiah Glover, the senior out of Lamarck, Texas. The rest of this offense at Texas Tech, three seniors on the line with Gandy Campbell and Loper. Daniel Loper is a three-year starter. Everybody catches the ball, the running backs and wide receivers, but Jared Hicks, keep an eye on him. He leads the team with 39 receptions, and he is a stud. Yeah, right now he's number one in the country in yards per game and receiving, averaging about 143 yards every ball game. Not bad for a sophomore. Orion Henderson now switching sides. Three to snap to Henderson. Looking for a block, doesn't get it. Does get up to about the 43 and a half yard line. Let's take a look at the Nebraska defense. They've given up only three touchdowns on the year. The line needs to pressure Gumby and then should come from the defensive tackles with Titus Adams and Lakeven Smith. The linebackers are solid. Barrett Rude, eight tackles away from the all time Nebraska record. And in the secondary, McPherson and Washington have been dinged up with the Bullocks. The brothers at safety are sound. Here's Kevin Cosgrove, the defensive coordinator for the Nebraska Cornhuskers, taking over for Bo Pelini, who ran the team last year. On third down and four. They just get it out to Glover. Has some running room. Up to the 40-yard line, a first down. Nehemiah Glover. We have a penalty flag thrown. Pickup of 19 on the play. Right now, Sonny Cumbie is getting plenty of time to throw the football, which allows him to go through his progressions and comes to his last, last check down to Nehemiah Glover running a real shallow pattern. Gets it to him in open Dead space ball. and lets first him run foul. with it. On the offense, 15 yard penalty. It, it is still first down. Well, we want to thank Allstate for providing tonight's goalpost cam. You're in good hands with Allstate, and that's a 15 yard penalty. As you heard against Texas Tech, this has been a problem this year. They're averaging over nine and a half penalties a ball game. But after a big pickup like that, Charles, you just shot yourself in the foot. Yeah, they get the first down, but now it becomes first down and long because you add the 15 yards to it. I understand it should be first and 25. I haven't seen the chains move yet. Let's take a look. Nope, what happens is it's post foul, okay? So it yeah. becomes first and 10. You just lose the yardage. Not the chain, so my fault on that one. But it's first and ten. But you're right. Remember where the ball was? Yep. Now look at it. Lost 15 yards after a big game. Well, now Cody Fuller goes wide to the right. The junior out of Smithland Valley High School, up just outside of San Antonio. Come the over center. The handoff. Henderson bounces to the outside. Gets to midfield. Back in Nebraska territory before Josh Bullock's puts the clamps on him. What you saw there, too, is look how far Sonny Cumbie has to reach to even get that handoff. Yeah, it's just kind of like a zone play or a stretch play, as people call it. You don't see many runs from Texas Tech. But take a look here, because Barrett Rude, the linebacker in the middle, watch, he's going to be the first guy to have contact. Boom, right there. Nice twist by Torian Henderson. You will not see that very often, folks. Number 38 in white does not miss many tackles. It's an excellent run by Torian Henderson. 
Boy, and those splits by those offensive linemen, they are wide for Texas Tech. Trying to help the running lanes and passing lanes. Nebraska now in a 3 4 defense. They swing it out. It'll be an incomplete pass intended for Brian Bishop. Fans, this telecast is available with Spanish translation via the SAP button on your remote control. You talk about this offense of Sonny Cumbie and Texas Tech. Mike Leach really tries to keep things simple, despite the fact it's a complex offense, if that makes any sense. Yeah, people think that he has about 7,000 plays that he runs. Really has about a playbook of 65 plays, run from about 12 formations. So now you can increase the number of plays there, but it's the same play, just a different look. Anderson and Mack. Troy Cumbie in the backfield. Third down, we'll call it three. They rush four. Cumbie, plenty of time. Has a man wide open inside the 35, down to the 33 yard line. Corey and Henderson, the junior out of Gatesville, Texas, his 25th reception of the year. What's happening is that Sonny Cumbie is getting plenty of time to throw the football. Plenty of guys out in the pattern, five out, and Torian Henderson able to sneak out of the backfield because he didn't have to pick up anyone on blitz pickup. Mm -hmm. So as the running back is able to sneak out of the backfield, get down the sideline, and Cumbie had plenty of time to find him for a first down. Now Nebraska with five on the line, showing blitz. Here they come. Tech picks it up. Cumbie dumps it off right in the middle, down to the 25 to the 24-yard line. Bristol Olamua, the junior out of Hawaii. This young man hadn't played football since 1999. Went on a two-year mission, went back to BYU, didn't like what he saw, sat out, transferred, came here because of his uncle. His uncle's the offensive line coach, Robert Ine. Great job, did a great job getting him here. <laughs> What a nephew to pick up on, huh? Oh, boy. 6'6", 255, 265, depending on what he ate for breakfast. That's right. He's thick. Cumbie looks right. Little slip screen to Glover. And he is dropped immediately. They call that play the X missile, and that's one of the favorite plays for Glover. That time it didn't work. Yeah, that's because they had a uh, stud missile that went after him. <laughs> you had the X missile. Watch number 38, Barrett Rood. He has great football smarts. But one thing about him also, he's a tremendous athlete. I think that gets overlooked. Everyone wants to talk about his intelligence all the time. Yeah. Barrett Root can flat out play. He's a big time athlete who diagnoses plays and then gets there and makes the play. He had 15 tackles versus Kansas, 10 unassisted. We spent some time with this young man last night. What an exceptional young man. I like him a bunch. Oh boy, but just watch this. The only thing I didn't like was he didn't realize his grandfather, great grandfather, Clarence Swanson, one of the all time yeah. greats in Nebraska, is in the College Football Hall of Fame. <laughs> Might need a little history lesson at home about just how great these guys were in his family. And I think he called us old without well, us knowing, didn't he? He definitely called us yeah. old. But you know how it is when you're in college. Oh, yeah. And, you know, we are old. <laughs> you got that right. Very modest young man, business-like approach. Now, I'll tell you more about his history. Is Kevin Cosgrove trying to get the set up here. Now, Pards, this is third and very short. For any other team, this is definitely yeah. a running play. But with Texas Tech, they can do so many things. They can hand it inside, quarterback draw. But right now, they're showing shotgun like they want to throw it here on third and very short. Nebraska rushes only three. They give it straight ahead. Bouncing to the outside. First down, Torian Henderson. Barrett Rude with his second tackle of the night. Six away now from the Nebraska record. What this offense does to you is that it puts guys in space, okay? Watch out here to the right. Watch the linebacker, Chad Sievers. He's the guy that has to come up and make the play in space and is unable to do it. He has the opportunity right there, missed tackle. Mm -hmm. Didn't get upfield and closed down enough to squeeze it down. And this offense makes you have to make tackles. Open field, very difficult to do. First and 10 from the 22. Cumbie throwing it up in the end zone, looking for a hit. Texas Tech. <laughs> Penalty flag was thrown after the play. I think that'll be a taunting or something against Texas it's Tech. Unsportsmanlike conduct, 88, Texas Tech. Now the penalty goes against Hicks, his fifth touchdown reception of the year for Sonny Cumbie, touchdown toss number 12. 
I think Nebraska will want this penalty on the kickoff. Oh yeah. As opposed to here. Because Texas Tech will be kicking Sports into the win. Conduct will be taken on the kickoff. Extra point play. One play. Bad play at the end by Hicks. Yeah. But overall, what a tremendous throw and catch. Sonny Cumbie put it in a perfect spot. And Jerry Hicks used his 6 4 frame to haul that one in. The extra point is good. 20 for 20 out of the year. But Jared Hicks, the sophomore out of Houston, Texas, Sharpstown High School, with a great catch over Larnell McPherson. Tech strikes first. Dykes, one of the assistant coaches, and Mike Leach both came over to him, talked to him. Nice touchdown. Don't do that again. Yeah, he's put his team in a tough spot oh, yeah. here. You made the point going to break that the wind's against them now. Now they have to kick the ball from their own 20. Ruffin McNeil, the special teams coach, his goal is to keep them inside the 25 on kickoffs. It's going to be very difficult to do because of the wind swirling. Should hold the ball up. Nebraska should end up with excellent field position here. Well, T -T -T too good. Has it at the 20 yard line. He's got to be too great with his leg on this one. Not too big. But it is going to be short. At the 25 yard line, Jackson gets hit, bounces, great field position. One thing Bill Callahan told us, he said he wanted to create the short field, and he does. Well, when you talk Lubbock, Texas, you talk to cotton fields. Ready to be harvested. You're watching college football on CBS. Six sixteen left in the first quarter. Texas Tech with a seven nothing lead over Nebraska, and our first and ten line is brought to you by Home Depot. Jackson and three wall to the backfield. They keep it on the ground. This time the front line of Texas Tech. They said defensive tackles are going to be in the key in this game. Board them on the line. And that was the case there. And Chris Hudler, number 93, stepped up, made a nice play from his defensive tackle spot. Adel Duck gets a defensive end. He's in the ball game now. And Nebraska had a decent drive on the first, mm -hmm. first go round, just couldn't convert on a key third down situation. Now Corey Ross back in the backfield. Second down and nine. Ross will try the right side. Texas Tech flows with him, maybe picks up two on the play. Adel Duckett, the senior out of Mineral Wells, Texas, with his first tackle of the night. Duck it in the long line of great defensive ends here at Texas Tech. Aaron Hunt, Monte Rager. He is a handy. Speaking of Adel Duckett, taking on Big Seppo, Ever Aye. Fought him off, got down the line, made a tackle. He had that in combination with the other defensive lineman who allowed no penetration by the offensive line of the Nebraska. There's Lyle Setton, six, the Dex Tech Set defensive coordinator. Looking for the floor. Pass complete inside the 50. It's a first down. Nazi Rudine on the stop. A junior out of Spring, Texas, a transfer from Howard Payne University. Pick up a 10 on the play, and that should move the chains. And Howard Payne is a Division III school in football. So for him to make mm -hmm. the leap from Division III to Division I, earned a scholarship after some stellar play last spring and early in the fall, earned a starting job, and he's one of the guys that Lyle Setensich told us we can't take him off the field. That's right. He and Antonio Huffman, the two corners, they have to go the distance. They're playing that well. Texas Tech giving the wide receivers a lot of room for Nebraska. They keep it on the ground. To the 44-yard line, Brock Stratton stands up. Corey Ross, Stratton, the sophomore out of San Antonio, Texas, playing with a leg brace. Didn't play last week against Oklahoma. Pick up a two on the play. He's another tough cookie. Another young man went on a two-year Mormon mission. Had a chance to go to BYU. Ended up here at Roosevelt High School and had an outstanding freshman year. The Big 12 Defensive Newcomer of the Year. Well deserved. Absolutely. Dane Todd and Ross in the eye formation. And a play action daily. Looking in the flat, had the man open, incomplete, intended from Matt Harrion. This telecast is a copyrighted presentation of Texas Tech University, a member of the Big 12 Conference. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Texas Tech University or the Big 12 Conference. Third down and eight. The first drive. This is where Nebraska stalled. On a third down situation. Ross. 
Three-step drop into the flat. Pass complete. Pilkington going to be short of the first down. Now Zero Dean again on the stop. Well, it was the tackle that made the play because it was a speed out route for Ross Pilkington. And when he turns to the outside, what they're hoping is a catch and a run. But look at that, Nazir Udin, he takes oh, him yeah. down on the spot he makes the catch. That's a nice open field tackle by number 26. Fourth down, Nebraska two of seven on the year. They're going for it. And they're a little confused oh, on where yeah. they want to go. Now they're getting set up, empty, empty backfield. Three-step drop, Bailey pumps, passes complete. Down to the 33-yard line, Mark LaFour, the junior out of Omaha, on the reception. Unfortunately for Nebraska, they don't get points for aesthetics because that sure looked confused. But ultimately, guys got to the right spot, and then Joe Daly able to deliver a sidearm pass with a big-time catch for a first down. Bill Callahan has to be a lot happier. The last two third downs and that fourth down have been right. converted. Well, a fresh set of downs, ball on the 32. They go back to the ground game with Ross. Texas Tech strings it out. May have lost a half a yard penalty on the play. Zero Dean again on the stop. He's got a lot of help from Randall Cherry, the defensive lineman, mm -hmm. stringing it out, allowing him to come up from the corner position. Mike Leach, the mastermind of the Texas Tech football team, especially the offensive unit. Mm -hmm. This will be the third penalty Outside against Tech. Defense, 46, five yards, remains first down. Watch how the defensive line strings this out because what they do is they get a little bit of penetration and look at the formation confusion for Nebraska. And eventually they get set up and boom, now they're ready to go. Now defensive line gets some pressure. There's the pass there. Good job by Joe Daly. Daly, the captain of the team, despite, despite the fact he's just a sophomore, shows you the confidence these players have in him. First down and five now. Floor in motion. They run into each other. Daly is in big, big trouble, and he is going to take a seat. Back at the 32-yard line. I think we should credit Corey Ross with the tackle, huh? <laughs> That's not something Bill Callahan wants to see in the stats. This is all footwork by the quarterback, Joe Daly, because on the fake, he got his footwork mix, mixed up on where he needed to go. The good thing he did was he went to where the play was designed to go in trying to follow Corey Ross to try and get something back towards the line of scrimmage. And last but not least, he held on to the football right. despite the confusion. Second and 10. Into the flat, pass, it is complete, and that'll be good for a first down. Pilkington with the reception. A tremendous catch by Ross Pilkington. Eight receptions last week versus Kansas. Take a look at his feet, because remember in college, how many feet do you need down? One. Catch, foot down, despite the hit by Nazir Udin. Excellent job by Ross Pilkington. Look at that. Boom, taps it down. Excellent catch. Good call by the official on the sideline, right on the spot. He nailed it. Now they call him their go-to receiver, and that's the reason why. Another fresh set of downs. They had eight catches in their last game against Kansas. Most since Matt Davidson for a wide receiver. Daly going for Pater, incomplete. Intended for Mark LaFleur, had a little too much mustard on it. And I think he was fortunate that he did. You know why? They had bracket coverage right. on that play. One guy underneath, one guy over the top. Would have been very difficult to fit that one in there. Probably a good idea. He threw it out of the end zone so no one can make a play on it. Is that some of the problem? Is it decision making or is it technique for Joe Daly? I think that because he's had to learn so much of this offense in such a short amount of time, no matter what they say, your head swims a little bit. Mm -hmm. And he's also at a point where he wants to make a big play. And sometimes you force things a little bit. On second and ten, Ross puts his head down and just runs some people over as he gets down to the 16-yard line. Pick up a six on the play. We'll bring up another third down situation for Joe Daly and company. And one thing that Bill Callahan has done, he, he has pared down a little bit. I mean, they put all the offense in. They didn't hold back. But he has curtailed it to fit what he's got as far as talent. But what he's doing is he's trying to, as you said, curtail what they were doing. He's trying to make it manageable for the talent he has on the field to make it easier for these guys to play faster because their heads won't be clouded. Well, he calls the plays. Three-step drop, quick pass. Intercepted, Texas Tech. Adell Duckett. 
Lost the football. It's on the ground, and we've got a bunch of red jerseys on it, and I think they've got it at the 45. We do have a penalty flag back at the 29-yard line. Adel Duckett, a little Johnny on the spot. Well, coming into this game, we were concerned about Sonny Cumby and how many balls he'd had batted back yeah. at him. In this case, Joe Daly has it batted at him, and Adel Duckett with the big pick, the sack master, getting to run with in the open field, and then he lost it after a great play by Grant Mulkey, number 84, running him down. Ball came free, but I believe Texas Tech recovered it, and they should be in business. I know there's a flag that they have to sort out, but bottom line is they have the ball. Personal fouls on both teams, 41 offense, 71 defense. Those penalties decline, but it's Tech's ball at this point. First down. Take a look here, because Joe Daly sprints out, and the ball is tipped up in the air by Duckett to himself. What a great play wow. on the line of scrimmage. And then watch Mulkey, number 84. See the hustle? And he punches through, and the ball comes free. Watch this. Great job by Mulkey oh, yeah. giving his offense a chance to get the ball back. Ultimately, Texas Tech recovered it, but two, two terrific plays. Duckett on the pit interception, Mulkey on the hustle. Well, Duckett is a special guy, special sense about this game of football. Didn't play last week, as Charles mentioned, groin injury. Told us yesterday, I will play. Don't worry about it. First and 10 from the 45 for the Red Raiders. Already up 7-0, 153 to play in the first. Cumby with a quick out. Down to the 42-yard line. Trey Haverty on the reception. The senior out of Richardson High School, or Richardson, Texas. Richardson Berkner High School. Joe Daly, his 12th interception on the year, matching his jersey number, not something he wanted to have happen. Tried to throw a little sprint out pass, but Adel Duckett couldn't get back to the quarterback, and he did exactly as he was taught. When you can't get any more penetration back towards the quarterback, stop and get your hands up. Affect the passing lane, and he couldn't have affected it any better than he did on that play, could he? Well, Joe Daly needs to tell his offensive lineman to knock these guys on the back when they jump. That'll keep him from jumping sometimes. Yeah, he got a cut blocking at the line of scrimmage. Gumby throws the safety valve, incomplete intended for Henderson. Dorian Henderson's 5'10", needed to be about 6'5 for that Sonny Cumbie throw. One of the few times we've actually seen pressure on Sonny Cumbie that time from the Nebraska defensive line, number five, Bernard Thomas. Mm -hmm. For Sonny Cumbie into an inaccurate throw. And you can see Mike Leakes, the 43-year-old. That's a law degree from Pepperdine. He's a movie buff. His favorite movie is Rio Bravo with John Wayne. <laughs> because everywhere. it talks about John, uh, John T. Chance fights the Burdett family, and he draws comparisons to working as a team from that movie. Gumby, little shovel pass on oh, Nebraska. They smelled that one a mile away. Lakeven Smith, the junior out of Macon, Georgia. I watched a little tape on Texas Tech beforehand, and they use this play effectively against TCU. Fake pass, then they shovel it underneath. Nebraska's watching a little tape, too. Look, even Smith holding his spot inside. As you said, sniffed it out. Big time play right there, forcing Texas Tech into a punt situation. The black shirts on sudden change, once again, shutting down an offense after a turnover by their offense. Well, Nebraska averaging about seven yards on punt returns. They haven't been that low since 1979, awaiting the kick of Alex Reyes. He tries to keep it low into this wind, backing up to the eight-yard line. Bonico is dropped at about the 15. Nice job with the kick. Covered about 37 yards. Excellent coverage. Now, when you come to Texas, my friends, there's one thing you got to eat. That's a little chew, a little barbecue. Outside the stadium, they got the ribs working. We'll be back. After the Texas Tech interception, they had the ball in Nebraska territory, but once again, as Charles mentioned, the black shirts closing them down, and it has not gone unnoticed. That is the 19th time Nebraska's turned the ball over this year. 12 interceptions, 7 fumbles, 19 turnovers. The defense has given up just 28 points off those turnovers, and Joe Daly, the first one to congratulate the defense when they came off the field, giving them a very big thank you. Six, that is an amazing number. Great point, Craig, and six of those points were a pass interception for yes. a touchdown. It really should have gone Record. Jackson gets a little opening, trips his way up to about the 24-yard line. 
A true freshman out of Mississippi. That's a great observation by Craig Sager about what they did. And again, Nebraska rising up under Kevin Cosgrove, shutting down a team. They take pride in it. Now they've got to rise up offensively now. The first quarter is in the book. Sonny Cumbie hooked up with Hicks. That's why Texas Tech leads 7-0. Welcome back to college football on TBS, part of Big PlayStation Saturday as we get set to start the second quarter. Texas Tech leads the Nebraska Cornhuskers 7 0. Along with Charles Davis, Craig Sager, I'm Ron Thulin. Welcoming you back to Jones SBC Stadium. Herbie Husky, Little Red is there. Little Red. He's there, all in his glory. Second down and one for the Huskers. All on their own 24 yard line. Keeping it on the ground. Safe run with Jackson. Gets the first down, pushed back. Let's talk about Joe Daly for just a second. We saw them throwing some very simple and safe passes early on. Do you think Coach Callahan is concerned about losing this man's confidence and they've got to get back to the running game a little bit now? I think so. I think that he is very conscious of that because that's the 12th interception he's thrown. He's naturally frustrated because he wants to be perfect in everything he does. He's a very conscientious young man, and no one's worked harder to master this offense than Joe Daly. They just want to see him get the production that they think he deserves after all the effort he's put in. Three in motion. Little play action with Ross. They're throwing out of the flag. Incomplete. Here come the flags. Nazir Udin just mugged Ross Pilkington, and we had laundry from everywhere. And before we see the replay, I'm going to go out on a little bit of a limb. Oh, here, here comes the cornerback now. No, I think okay. Nazir Udin bailed Pilkington and Daly out on this play because really yeah. I don't think it's going to be a completed pass. Oh, good. Okay. Pass so, interference, defense number 26, 15 yards, automatic first down. See, I thought he was too high with the pass, and I didn't think Pilkington really had a shot at it. Watch. See, I don't think he was going to catch that one. Yeah. And Nazir Udin comes in front, and if you're going to come in front, how many times do I say you have to get the ball? He had a nice play. The problem was he draped one arm on Pilkington as he made the play. The official had to pull the flag. Fourth penalty against Tech, 50 yards already in penalties for the Red Raiders. Now how about Coach Callahan taking a shot on first down yeah. with Joe Daly, trying to get him good downs to throw the football to help his confidence. On first and ten, Daly will put it up again. Here comes the rush into the flat. Pass is complete to LaFleur. He takes quite a hit quickly on that third reception. Ernie, you have a score for us. Yeah, Ron, I was kind of hoping we wouldn't have to do this uh, anytime soon, but uh, Georgia on the last play of the game down 19-14. David Green throws incomplete, and Tennessee pulls the upset between the hedges, snaps Georgia's 18-game winning streak. And Charles, just go ahead. I'm open game, just go for it. Ernie, I really appreciate you getting that highlight in early and not saving it. You're a, you're a good man. <laughs> and Charles, you're nice. expect a nice wax job on the car tomorrow. <laughs> Corey Ross on the carry. He's upended. Big time tackle there. Brent Slaughter looked like number 39 penetrating, making the play. A little misdirection. Nebraska trying to pull a guard to get around. He got there, but Slaughter came through the backside about the spot he vacated and upended the runner, making a third and six situation now for Nebraska. Also three on the play. Nebraska going against the win now. Texas Tech with five on the line of scrimmage. Three wide receivers for the Huskers. Three-step drop, the quick look in, incomplete off the hands of Pilkington. Do you think he heard some footsteps? He wouldn't be human if he didn't. That was a flat curl route. One receiver running into the flat on kind of an arrow route, and then the curl inside to Pilkington, but it was right next to a defender. There's Daly. Remember, he had one batted back at him, and now he doesn't really step into the throw. Did you notice that? Kind of more arm motion and arm action, mm -hmm. not really getting his legs into that one, wanting to get it there. The ball was there. Pilkington just unable to come down with it. Sam Cook set to kick it away, and an exciting young freshman, Danny Amendola. The two freshmen out of the Woodlands, Texas, outside of Houston, back at the 12-yard line. There's no fear. Gets away from the first wave, but he is going to be plunked down right where he put his hands on it. 42 on the kick. We'll give him two on the return. But Texas Tech with 12.58 left in the opening half. Under beautiful skies, they have the lead 7 0.
in their first Big 12 home game of the year. Texas Tech leading Nebraska 7 0, 12 58 left to play in quarter number two. And our first and 10 line is brought to you by Home Depot. Of course, this is homecoming, and Texas Tech have won 11 of their last 12 homecoming games. They have yet to beat Nebraska in their history. The Huskers with a 7 0 advantage, and you can see what Texas Tech has done on first down. First and 10 from their own 14 yard line. They got people everywhere on the field now for Tech. Come the quick look. Glover up over the 15 yard line and the 20 to the 22 yard line. They wanted to get their wide receivers in sync this year, and I think they've done it so far tonight. Well, they graduated three terrific receivers from last year, and so they brought in some new guys that had to get there. That was Cody Fuller, 24, Torian Henderson out of the backfield, number six, Nehemiah Glover, who's moved into Wes Walker's spot, and then Jared Hicks has really emerged, and we saw him earlier tonight catch the first touchdown of the game. Six different guys have already caught passes this evening. They got six guys in double figure catches this year. Gumby over the middle. Pass is complete. First down up to the 32 yard line. Ray Haverty. Well, Craig Sager, I tell you what, you've been impressed with these receivers, watching them in practice and also reading more about them. Well, you're right, Ron. Ron was uh, talking, obviously, about the receivers. Last year, remember, they had Mickey Peters, Carlos Francis, Wes Welker, not only their top three receivers, the top three receivers in school history. This group of wide receivers were told that they weren't doing good. They weren't be able to replace those guys, but they definitely have. They worked together in the offseason. They've lifted. They also kept that nickname, the Afros, America's finest receivers on Saturday. <laughs> Nothing to do with black and white because uh, Haverty is one of the leaders in that group. <laughs> <laughs> well, a little slip screen to Johnny Mack. He's got some running room. Still on his feet as he gets inside the 45, down to the 43-yard line. A senior out of Lakeland, Florida. All 5'7", 175 pounds of them, he takes it 25 yards. Take a look at these wide, these linemen splits. These things are huge. The gaps that they've got, do you know why they have the gaps that big? Because they want to increase their throwing and running lanes. It spreads out the defense, makes it tough to rush off of the edge, and look at how well it worked here. They had Nebraska so spread out, there was a gap for Johnny Mack to get into, and once he did, he bolted upfield for a big game. Again, Nebraska rushes just three. Covey, plenty of time. Going down the middle, looking for Pater. He's almost intercepted. Daniel Bullocks, the junior out of Chattanooga, Tennessee, almost had the interception, which would have been his third of the year. They had a couple of Texas Tech Red Raiders converging on that ball, well, Charles. Yeah, Trey Haverty, number seven, and Nehemiah Glover, number six, that almost ran into each other. And see Haverty as he pushes off and has to reverse direction? If the ball's thrown to the other side, he's over the top of Barrett Rude, number six. I mean, number 38 in white. That's the matchup Trey Haverty wanted. But the ball ended up coming to the backside. That brought Daniel Bullock's number 14 back into the picture in the coverage. He got there and was able to break up the pass. Well, Cumbie now 13 to 16, 123 yards to roll the football. Second and 10 from the Nebraska 43. Three man rush. Cumbie with Ty has a man wide open. It's Mack again inside the 20 yard line down to the 15. He got wide open. But I think the key is Cumbie's got all day back there. You called it off the top, partner. Three-man rush. Kevin Cosgrove, the defense coordinator for Nebraska, has got to figure out a way to get some pressure because the three-man rush doesn't do it. And what ended up happening was Cumbie went through every progression and realized that Johnny Mack, number four, was isolated against a defensive back, a safety. Josh Bullock's number 20, and that's a matchup that they like just about every time. Josh Bullock's is a good cover guy. Yeah. Johnny Mack, he's a little quick one. His second catch, that one went for 24. First and 10 from the 15. Gumby time again, into the flat again, down to the three, down to the two yard line. Bristol Olamua, the big guy, 260 plus pounds, and just carried the defender a couple of more yards. How about that big fella? Bristol Olamua. He's going to come crossing back from, a, from the right to the left. He's number 35. And look how Sonny Cumbie waited till he cleared Fabian Washington, number three, before he delivered the ball perfectly in a spot that Olamua could catch the ball oh, yeah. and still run to the sideline. They say he probably has the best hands on the team. First and goal now from the three. Henderson in the backfield. 
Henderson looking, running, they're stretching it out. Touchdown, Texas Tech. That is the first rushing touchdown that Nebraska has given up this year. And only the fifth total they've given up this year. The extra point. And it is good. So Texas Tech is doing what they do best. They're throwing it, they're mixing it up with the run and going to break, Charles. Ringing the bell, the offensive line just holds their spot. Henderson sprinting to the corner, eludes Brood and gets in, and Texas Tech is up two touchdowns. Side of Lubbock, the proverbial oil well, and when you drive south of the city, you'll see a hundred of them. Texas Tech has something to cheer about. They lead 14 0, 10 35. Left to play in this first half. Much better kicking situation than the last oh, yeah. time he kicked off. Now the wind's at his back and kicking from the normal spot. He's had six touchbacks out of 15 kickoffs, make it seven. Green had no place to go. Well, this week's installment of Home Depot Building a Team features sets of brothers on both teams. This is quite the family affair for both teams, especially the Nebraska Cornhuskers, Charles. Yeah, when you take a look, we've already talked about Barrett Rude, the linebacker. His brother, Bo, is also a linebacker on the team. Mark LaFleur has got some catches tonight. His brother, Dan, on the team. And the Red Raiders, Cody and Lance Fuller, and, uh, and Cody and Slade Hodges. Cody Hodges is the backup quarterback. So one good thing, mom does not have to split her sweater. That's right. You know, in different allegiances, she has her sons on the same team. There's Barrett Rude, the All-American linebacker. They've got to get it figured out. I mean, Nebraska sideline. He's got two tackles tonight. They keep it on the ground, which is probably smart. In the early part of the game, as Corey Ross takes a seat, we saw the Nebraska offensive line be very physical, especially that left side with Coe and Erickson and throwing Kurt Mann in there. Don't they have to establish something again on that offensive line? I think so. They're down two touchdowns, but it's no time for panic. Doesn't mean in a West Coast offense, Nebraska fans think, oh boy, we're going to air it yeah. out. They don't need to. Plenty of time. We're still in the second quarter, 10 minutes to go, but they need the big fellas to get going. If you look at the total yardage, Texas Tech, no surprise, 163 pass yards already. Ross has stood up. Gets to about the 23 yard line. Well, John Doe Mwamba is the one who comes up with the stop. The senior out of Brussels, Belgium. Yeah, big Patrice. And right now, Texas Tech is doing a good job of rotating defensive linemen. Already tonight, we've called Patrice Majond Majondo Mwamba number 90. We've called Randall Cherry number mm -hmm. 84. Both of them are listed third team on the deck chart. That means that Lyle Setensich wants to get a lot of guys on the field so they have guys fresh for the fourth quarter. Third down and seven. Bailey, plenty of time. Opens up in the middle of the field. Passes complete to Harry in the tight end. That is his second reception of the game, and that should put him over 1,000 yards for his career in receiving. And when in doubt, where do you go? You go to your All-American, number 11, right side of your screen, and look at this. Good coverage. But Joe Daly said, I'm going to number 11. I need a first down now. Number 45 on the play, uh, that's Brock Stratton. Didn't get his head around in time. Matt Herring with a big first down catch. Well, Herring can go vertical on you. Yeah, he, he runs better than what oh, people yeah. think. He can get downfield. Daly over the middle, passes incomplete, intended for Corey Ross. He had a little mustard on that ball. He did, and just a little less pace on the ball probably means a completion. Mm -hmm. But when he's throwing the ball inside, what he's thinking is, I have to get it there right now from point A to point B, because if you loft it inside, that usually means trouble. So his receivers have to learn to come down with those passes, as you said, have a little mustard on them right there. It's a nice throw by Joe Daly, just an incompletion. I like Joe Daly, and I know he's had some problems this year, but this guy's a gym rat. He's not afraid to watch the films and work out. You gotta love it. He's been a stand-up kid all year long. When they've had trouble, he's been the first one to talk about it and accept the blame. Out of 16 for 74 yards, but they'll keep it on the ground, trying to get something going with Ross. Now let's send it back to Atlanta with a little Oklahoma State-Colorado update. E.J. 
Hey, Ron, Oklahoma State is 5-0. and Donovan Woods to Prentice Elliott here made it 21 to nothing. They win it 42 to 14. Vernon Morenci, 166 yards on the ground for the number three rusher in the country. And I have a question for you guys. Who is that on the Texas Tech sidelines? Mike Leach or Vince Gill? <laughs> That's beautiful. Well, if Amy Grant was there, we'd say it's Vince Gill. Well, I know Vince Gill has like a two handicap in golf, and yeah. I think Mike Leach does that. So yeah. I think we have our answer. <laughs> Third down and six for the Huskers. Quick three step, drop the looking, complete to Mulkey. Grant Mulkey, the sophomore out of Arlington, Texas, his first reception of the night. He is a gutty player. We saw it there. Remember the one that got tipped a little while ago by Adele Duckett? This time, Joe Daly dropped down to get the ball into the pass lane and get it to Grant Mulkey. He said, Ryan, put a little look in pattern. First down again for Nebraska. I think what Bill Callahan's seeing is tight coverage by Texas Tech. Don't be surprised if he tries to push him a little bit deeper mm -hmm. with patterns to try and back him off a little. Look up with nine on the play. Jackson. Takes a huge hit from Vincent Meeks, the junior out of Dallas, Texas, Rockwall High School. I know that the Meeks shall inherit the earth, but this is this is make, this is convincing, isn't it? Yeah. Big time hit by Meeks. The only downside for Texas Tech was it was a seven-yard run for Brandon yeah. Jackson. As he bolts through the hole. Great form tackle from the free safety Meeks. He packs a wallop when he hits, but Nebraska in pretty good shape here on second and short. They try to string it out to the outside. Will not get the first down. Pretty good defense there by Antonio Huffman on Jackson. And one of the things Bill Callahan told us with the West Coast offense and what he wanted to concentrate on, winning first down. We've heard that so much, but in this offense, how important is it? Is it more important than other offenses? I don't think it's any more important than other offenses. This is important because, especially now as his team struggles on offense, mm -hmm. you have to manage the downs. You have to be ahead of pace because when you're behind, they can load up on you and come at you. And right now, his team's not perking on all cylinders. On third and four, Daly tucks it. He can run it. But not this time when you're surrounded by a couple of red jerseys. Antonio Huffman comes up to make the stop. Denny Wiley is the strength coach for Texas Tech. And somewhere on that sideline, he's wearing a proud smile as we see Bill Callahan, the offensive coordinator, head, excuse me, the head coach and play caller, because his team has really responded to their offseason conditioning program. Texas Tech has really gotten stronger on the defensive side. And they're playing a lot faster than they did last year. Fourth down and four for Nebraska. They called the timeout. We'll come back to Lubbock right after this. Texas Tech leading 14 to nothing. Charles mentioned that it looked like Benny Wiley's conditioning program was paying off. The team looked stronger and faster. It's not only bigger, stronger, and faster, but Benny Wiley, who they got from the Desperados in the Arena Football League, also has individual programs for everybody depending on position. It's also speed training, power, agility, and most of all, in some positions, flexibility. Well, they didn't need any flexibility there as fourth and four. The pass to Terrence Nunn is incomplete. And Texas Tech will take over, and Benny likes what he sees. There he is, pocket Hercules right there. Is he Hawk from that Robert Urich show? I mean, look at that. <laughs> look at that. I think he's tougher than Hawk myself after watching him. Ruffin McNeil, their assistant head coach, said that he worked out three times a day in the offseason with the program because he had the team built into three different groups for workouts. Look at Benny getting excited about that last one. And that last pass, that's a long pass to the outside oh, yeah. for Joe Daly. Unable to step into the throw. It was all arm. It fell short. Very difficult right now for Nebraska. And the defense for Nebraska, this is a key series Absolutely. because Texas Tech is hot on offense. That's why Nebraska went for it on fourth down and four. They didn't want Tech's offense to get back on the field. Jumping yeah. like pass incomplete. Intended for Nehemiah Glover. Well, Cal had a whale of a ball game with USC today coming up on the short end of the stick in the final minute. Ernie, of course, will have highlights coming up at halftime. But next week, right here on TBS, you'll see that same Cal team as the Cal Bears play host to the UCLA Bruins. We get our first look at Maurice Drew, J.J. Harrington, and the cast of thousands from Cal. Jeff Tedford doing a great job there. That's going to be a big game because you have to wonder if they're going to have a hangover after USC. It's going to be a heck of a ball game. Maurice Drew, J.J. Harrington. Two terrific running backs. On second and ten, Cumbie's pass intercepted. Glover never turned around. Bullocks has some running room. 
Steps out of bounds as he gets inside the 30 to the 27 yard line. That is his third interception of the year for Daniel Bullocks. Now it's vertical routes, okay? And what happens on vertical, Sonny Cumbie thinks that Nehemiah Glover is moving to the outside position. Glover running right up the hash. Miscommunication between quarterback and wide receiver. And Daniel Bullocks, his third interception of the year, outshining his brother Josh, who had 10 yeah. last year, was an All-American. Now Daniel has his third, Josh only has one, but what a big one for the Nebraska defense. Huge. We said it was a huge possession, they came through in a big way. We talked about Texas Tech getting used to those new wide receivers. Communication problem there. First and 10 from the 27. And the Tech defense steps up to the challenge on Corey Ross. And to put a cap on that last pass, that wasn't as much a new receiver because Nehemiah Glover, yeah, he, he, he a long-time starter, is a new quarterback. Yeah. Sonny Cumbie is first time in this offense actually running it, even though he's a fifth-year senior. Now let's see what the Tech defense can do with what they call sudden change after a turnover. Can they can, can they step up as Nebraska's black shirts did earlier in this game and put down this offensive assault by Nebraska? Loss of two on the play, second and twelve. 5.09 to play in the half. Daly out into the flat. Almost intercepted by Antonio Huffman. That was again one of those long passes you talked about. And the Texas Tech cornerbacks are sitting on routes now. See, as he breaks to the outside, none. Huffman has never really pushed back out of his back pedal. Part of it is where they are on the field because the field's condensed a little bit, so you don't back up as much. But I really think Bill Callahan is seeing this, and as they get more open field, he'll run deeper routes in order to push these cornerbacks off of his receivers a little bit. Nebraska 4 of 9 on third down. They need 12. Daly in the empty backfield goes for that and then some and it's incomplete intended for Pilkington. Good coverage by Nebraska's Antonio Huffman who leads him with five tackles already tonight. Yeah Huffman was covering from the corner position and Vincent Meeks number one was coming inside out from the free safety position again they bracketed the receiver one guy over the top one guy short it would have been a great great pass if that one had gotten through forcing Nebraska into another field goal situation and it's a new kicker this was last year's kicker David Dykes now coming into the game. They spotted at the 36 yard line will be a 46 yarder for Dykes. Got to hurry. And it does. Dykes who kicked last year with the field goal and at least Nebraska got out with something. That's big for Nebraska to get three points on the board but I really think the Texas Tech's defense will feel good about this in sudden change holding them to a field goal not giving up six. Does it have enough? Does it have enough? Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, baby, it looked like it almost clipped the crossbar. See, Sandro DeAngelis had his hit and bounce back at him in the Kansas game from about the same distance. Well, Dykes out of Spring, Texas, had a freshman record 14 field goals made last year. He unseated DeAngelis last September. Now, comes back and does it again. And yeah, it could possibly now we could be seeing a change in kickers again. Well, Nebraska gets on the board with 4.53 to play in the half. They obviously needed the points, yeah. but I still say that Texas Tech's defense walks off the field with their head high because that was a big change in turnaround, a big change in field position, and Nebraska didn't even really sniff the end zone. The field goal barely got over, so Tech walks to the bench saying, okay, you got three, but we really shut you down after the change. Yeah, they may have to hurry this one up because there is some weather that just might be coming in here in a little bit. The skies are getting very, very dark. I'm going to start kicking with the win at the 15 yard line. Amendola tripped up as he gets to the 25 yard line. It's time for the fan rant brought to you by Kia Motors, which reminds you to make every mile count. Night. That wasn't even last <laughs> night. They can early start oh, down man. here. They were rocking and rolling Thursday here. It's always guns up in Lubbock, Texas. 
And they're keeping it on the ground on the left side. Joel Filani. The redshirt freshman out of Phoenix, Arizona, and coaches love this young man. They say he's ready to bust out, was the words they used. He's a guy who began the season as a starter, lost his job, but has still continued to work hard and stay with it. He has a world of talent, as do most of these receivers. Oh, you know, yeah. Craig, Craig, Craig Sager emphasized how great these guys are at the top of our show, and we've seen excellent play from them thus far tonight. Just one miscommunication. That can reception. Well, you love getting on on the first down. Glover gets the first down as he gets to the 40. That should be a penalty. They're not going to throw it. It was close, but I thought he was pretty much heading out of bounds. I think it's close. He was heading there, and I think he caught him right on the sideline. Yeah. Let's take a look. Watch the blocking out front by the wide receivers. See what they're doing? And then right on the sideline, wham. Well, that's close because he was in the white. You know, he had one foot in the white as he's heading out of bounds. Nebraska gets a little shot in there. Close one. Yeah, Close it was. one. Well, at least he'll remember it next time. He will definitely remember that, but he also remembers that they got a first down. That's right. Go ahead, hit me. I got the first down. Look at the Texas Tech. It just varies their line splits. They go wide, they come in tighter, depending on what they want to get done, showing Nebraska different looks. On a four man rush, they beat it again with Haverty. Haverty down to the 40 yard line. His third reception of the night for the senior out of Richardson, Texas. This is a guy that already has his degrees in graduate school. He only had 33 receptions coming into this year total for his career. Watch these guys right there. The offensive line, the spot shadow. There's no way that anyone's getting your Sonny Cumby right now. He has plenty of time to pick up the receiver on the shot on the crossing route. 16 yard gain for Texas Tech cutting up the Nebraska defense again on this drive. On first and ten again, Cumby. This time here comes the rush. He gets a block, gets away from it. Pass incomplete, almost picked off on the play. Stuart Bradley coming up to knock it away. Oh, what a pass rush will do for you. Didn't oh, we just yeah. show Sonny Cumby throwing pretty much from the rocking chair? All right, had plenty of time. The very next play, what happens? Flush from the pocket. That's what that's what keeping oh, excuse me, Titus Adams, number 96. He gets knocked out out of the way and then there's the big hit by Lakeven Smith force Cumbie into a tough throw that was almost intercepted downfield a pass rush is a defensive backs best friend well, Kevin Cosgrove like that but Texas Tech's going to call a timeout with 334 to play in the half with Texas Tech leading 14 to nothing you know we've seen the three man rush the four man rush but this offense of Texas Tech it's really not designed to make big plays but to make big plays off defensive mistakes. Yeah and what you're saying is that if you're rushing three he'll have all day to throw it even if you drop eight usually people come open because if you have all day long you can't stay with the coverage that long. Mm -hmm. Same thing with four so when you start to rush five six or seven now you're trying to cover all these receivers with just a minimal amount of defensive backs that's when Tech gets the advantage. I want to remind you to stick around for our Chili's halftime report. Ernie Johnson will catch you up on all of today's action, including Mark Fine reporting from that great game down in Dallas, OU, Texas, and Darren Elliott from the Cal USC game. And of course, Ernie will have all the highlights of that Tennessee Georgia game. That's right, he will have all the highlights of the Tennessee Georgia game. <laughs> At least one or two. That's right. How about that OU game, though? Adrian Peterson is the best oh. running back in the Big 12 Conference. End of story. Give him the award. The newcomer, everything right now. I'll tell you what, what he, what he did today against a top five team in the country as a true freshman oh. was awfully impressive. And, <laughs> and what's even more impressive is how Kiwan Jones has no problem with it. That's the right. Former starter comes in and does his job equally as well. Congratulations to Bob Stoops and company. Glover in motion. They throw it out in the flat. Passes bobbled. Incomplete. Intended for Falani. Just couldn't get the phalanges on it. Well, they're very fortunate there because he popped it up in the air where it could have been picked off. It's supposed to be a quick pass to the sideline. You know, people get hung up on Texas Tech's running numbers. That You know, they're, they're in, the, in the 100s in the country and running the football somewhere in that neighborhood. As we look there, see that 10? Yep. That 10 is what that's the formation that, that Texas Tech is coming out with in the brass season with their personnel, their personnel group in one back in the backfield, a 10 group. That's what the defense looks at before they go out and start to play. They want to know what the formation grouping is. On third down and 10, Cumbie sees the rush, passes incomplete, intended for Haverty. 
had it in his hands. Good play though by Kellen Houston, the senior out of Ankeny, Iowa. And he's played well in oh, recent yeah. weeks. A lot of pass breakups. He's had excellent games against Pittsburgh and Kansas. But to finish my point about their run game, a lot of those pass plays that you see Tech run that goes that goes wide laterally and swing passes to the backs, that's a lot of mm -hmm. Texas Tech's run game. You know, everybody says, well, they don't have a match, they don't have this. Well, that's a lot of their run game. They just go down as passes. Well, the gambler, Mike Leach, isn't going to gamble this time. But I bet Nebraska plays what they call punt safe because of where they are on the field, just in case he does decide he wants yep. to fake it here. Well, it's fourth down and 10. Reyes back to kick, whistles low. Hold on, everybody. Nice practice kick. Get all that. Now he's got the distance. <laughs> <laughs> he's got the wind working for him. 322 left to play in the half. Reyes, the sophomore out of Allen, Texas, and a 62 yarder versus New Mexico. He's one of those soccer guys. In fact, they've got a couple guys that have played soccer from this Texas Tech team. And Mike Leach says, I may have to institute a soccer program here for our football players. Yeah, what he really likes when their linebackers Fletcher Session was a big time soccer Delegate, player. Five yards. Remains fourth down. And what Mike Leach thinks is that anyone who has a control of ball with his feet make cuts mm -hmm. and still keep their eyes up and play. He thinks that translates well into football. So now what they want to have Alex Reyes is take a little bit off that big thumper he just hit. That's right. And give him a chance to try and kill it inside the 10. Of course, this is turf. This is not grass here. This is turf, so it's going to get a big bounce. And if the, if the punt receiver doesn't play the football, the, the, the gunners can go down and try and catch it and down it that way. So it doesn't bounce off of his coat. Well, this is going to sell. See what he's trying to do? Just, too deep. just let it go. Yeah, that's nine yards deep. Wind just caught it, took it into the end zone, and Nebraska will take over. First and 10 from their own 20 with 3.13 to play in the first half. Now let's take a look at some numbers. This is how Nebraska's done this year. The, the gap between passing and running, and it's getting a lot closer. Yeah, and the Nebraska fans, as we look at the 2004 number, it was overarching running to passing in, in previous years. But I think Nebraska fans were worried. When they heard West Coast offense, they thought that that white bar would mm -hmm. be way high and the red bar would be way low this year. Instead, what you're getting as we look at the numbers through the years, look at 2004, it's still 55% rush, 45% pass. The key word in West Coast offense, flexibility. Now well, they're flexible there as they get over the 30-yard line. Good for a first down. Bailey on the rifling pass. Stops the clock for a moment. Callahan once again the eyes upstairs are Jay Norvell technically the offensive coordinator but he the man who calls the plays is coach Callahan. How about tonight that's about as balanced as you're going to get. <laughs> yeah, if you open up the dictionary yeah. that'll rush out at you right there. Bailey sees the rush steps up in the pocket got some running room. Takes a seed as he gets up to about the 37. A penalty flag is going to be thrown, and I'm not sure if that's not going to be against Nebraska. I'm wondering about that. I think he had a guy trying to throw a block. Yeah. That that was pushing, pushing, and shoving with someone. Personal foul, number 51, oh. Texas Tech. 15 yards, automatic first down. Deep bake. See right oh, there. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Boom. I only saw the after effect of that. Well, Bake, the junior out of Sacramento, California, the transfer, that is not a smart play, young man. No, that's not a play that he needed to make there. And now you increase the field position for Nebraska. And offense has been struggling all night. You don't want to give them extra opportunities and open up the field. And remember what I said about Bill Callahan seeing the tight coverage of the corners? Mm -hmm. Don't be surprised if he doesn't take a shot to try and push it downfield. He has Willie Amos in the game right now. He's their speed guy up at the top of the screen. Six penalties, 70 yards for Texas Tech. First and 10, two and a half to play. Bailey out of the flat, short hops it. Should have hit the cutoff man. Mark the floor, the intended receiver. Did he step into that one enough? Talk about Joe Daly, number 12. Still doesn't work. Because I think sometimes young quarterbacks have a tendency when they get pressure in their faces all night long, even when it's not there, they, they cut it short a little bit. Eh, you know, that's not too bad. They just didn't get it there. Ball just didn't get there. That wasn't too bad. Well, Lyle Satanic has said that he doesn't want his defense to be world beaters. He just wants them to be average. He wants three good pass rushers. Gets one there, pass incomplete. That's just flat out good coverage. Brock Stratton out of San Antonio on the coverage, coming off that injury where he didn't play last year. Now there's a lot of comparisons to Brock Stratton and Zach Thomas. And Brock says, "Hey, I haven't done anything to be compared to Zach Thomas yet." And that's great, great modesty on Brock Stratton's part, and also recognizing just how great a player 
that Zach Thomas was at Texas Tech and continues today with the Miami mm -hmm. Dolphins. But when you cover Matt Herring, the tight end like that, yeah. that well, that's a great play by Brock Stratton. Yeah, we're going to call a timeout. I think it's going Texas Tech's going to call it. Second charge, team timeout. Two minutes and 20 seconds left to play in the half, and this is a big third down for Nebraska. They've only put three points on the board here in the opening half. Bill Callahan telling us, I still think this offense is ready to explode. We looked at the Kansas game. Yes, we didn't score a lot of points, but we saw a lot of good things, but they haven't exploded yet. Well, let's compare and contrast what we've heard this week. Lyle Setensich, the defensive coordinator, told us that last year, despite all the struggles they had at Texas Tech, they force-fed a lot of guys on the field. They played guys that they knew were coming back this year that they could count on no matter how bad it got because they said, they've got to get experience, we've got to bite the bullet. That's Lyle up there in the, in the booth standing up right now. Look at the defensive numbers from last year to this year and how much they've improved. I flipped that over to Nebraska because the fans at Nebraska are saying, well, this West Coast offense, we're not throwing the ball that well. Maybe we should run it more. But what Bill Callahan is doing is we still have to throw the football in order to get better at it. I'm not going to do it at the expense of a game, right. but we have to take our opportunities, take our shots, try and get our quarterback comfortable, get our receivers running routes. And again, he will never admit it, but he has an eye to the future also. That's right. It can only get better if you continue to run it. So patience is required by everyone on this one. Coach Lyle said that last year's defense was, and this, these are his exact words, the worst I have ever coached. And he's been around a while. He's been, been around a while. State, been at Cal Poly, right? He's Arizona been at Arizona State. State, did a great job at Cal as their defensive coordinator. Big third down. Third down and 10. Bailey will put it up. Steps up in the pocket, looking, throwing, has a man. Knocked away, incomplete. Another excellent play by Antonio Huffman. The quiet leader of this defense. Look at this coverage because the ball has to be out ahead. He had a receiver out who had a step on Huffman. Right there, number 28. That would be Isaiah Fluellen back from a pulled hamstring. But the ball has to be out ahead where he has a chance to run under it. And the ball short like that, that gives the corner a chance yeah. to make a play. And Antonio Huffman doesn't miss those opportunities. Danny Amendola standing back at his 10-yard line. Had a 52 and a 47 yard return versus TCU. They like this young man's future. Moves up to the 15. He doesn't like fair catching. <laughs> he's, he's got world of courage, doesn't he? <laughs> he's a freshman, but he's becoming a senior quickly. 32 yards on the kick. He says he doesn't mind being hit. Well, he's gotten a lot of that tonight. <laughs> His wish is coming true. And this Texas Tech offense, you say, hey, there's only 204 left. That's an eternity for Mike Leach and company. Without a doubt, this offense is designed for quick strikes and also eating up big chunks of yards to get down the field. 204 to go. Timeout situation. Tech only has one left, but remember, every every first down stops the clock to move the chains. And Tech works on this all the time, so they'll move quickly to the line of scrimmage and be ready to go when the ball signaled in play if they make first downs. Well, now Nebraska puts three down linemen, four down linemen, and they rush for it. Quickly out of the flat to Glover. Gets up to the 20 yard line. Now let's take a look at the top 10 today, see what happened. USC, that thrilling game, beating Cal, Oklahoma. Beating Texas for the fifth consecutive time. How about that Tennessee Vols? How about the Vols with a big bounce back after getting really jumped on by Auburn at home the week before? Yep. Phil former guest team ready to play. Miami Idol. They get Louisville next. Texas, they'll drop. Auburn, big win today. We'll see Cal next week. I don't think they should drop very much. I don't think that's they a heck of a ball game that they play with US, USC today. Right, second and five. Cumbie looking for a lot. Throwing it down the sideline. To the 20, to the 10. He's in the books. Touchdown pass, the longest for Sonny Cumbie and for Hicks. I told you, 204 is an eternity. They use just a little bit of the time, and the extra point 
is good. 50 seconds at two Texas Tech to score. That's exciting, Charles. How about the size and strength here? 6'4", 209 on 5'11", 180. And look who wins, and then he slips the tackle at the end. And Jared Hicks takes it the distance, his second touchdown of the game. Sonny Cuffey's loving this. Texas Tech up 21 to three in Lubbock. Texas Tech trying to keep pace in the South. Nebraska needs to win to keep pace in the North of the Big 12, but Hicks had something to say about that. It is second touchdown reception of the night, and here's what he has done this year. That is impressive. Not bad. 2-11 against TCU. First four games of the year, over 100 yards. A Texas Tech record, 74 against Oklahoma, and he's already over 100 tonight. So how about that? Five of his first, what is it? Four of his first, four, five of his first six games, over 100 yards receiving. A sophomore who got his feet wet last year right. and has really elevated his game this year. Number one passer and the number one receiver in college football. Hook up again. Rask is going to bring it out. Not a smart move. He hesitated too. Green gets dumped with 109 and it's still dangerous time for Nebraska. Ernie, what do you have coming up at halftime? Well, Phil, we're going to set our sights on a couple of top 10 showdowns on the Chili's halftime report. Number one, Southern Cal seeking a little payback against number seven, Cal, and it's Oklahoma, Texas, and the Red River shootout. Highlights and post-game reaction from both games coming up on the Chili's halftime report. And if we have time, we'll try to jam some Tennessee highlights in there. Probably <laughs> unlikely. <laughs> well, he did say he's going to go top 10, right? Yeah. So he's got to get it in because Georgia was top 10 going into this game. <laughs> well, another unsportsmanlike conduct penalty against Mike Leach's Red Raiders. I think it was on Joe Garcia, the redshirt freshman out of Clovis, New Mexico. And unless he said something, yeah. I'm not sure about the call because there's a lot of enthusiasm about that. Look at the yards per play. Texas Tech averaging that first down essentially every snap. Now the Texas Tech defensive line just teeing off. On Joe Daly, Randall Cherry, the junior out of Salina, Texas, his second tackle of the year. Remember, Randall Cherry was third on the depth chart coming into this game and has given them big time production here in the first half. Texas Tech, as you, as you mentioned, Ron, has never beaten Nebraska. And right now, all the momentum is going their way as we end the first half. I think Nebraska's going to run the ball and try and get out of here now after the first down set. And we have another penalty, and it's going to be on the Texas Tech sideline. The line judge was standing at the 40 yard line through the flag and immediately pointed to the Texas Tech bench the field judge I should say. If that's the case that's something interesting. was said over there and that's why he's upset. Enforcement like conduct sideline interference Texas Tech 15 yards. Did they warn him yet. I don't remember a warning. I don't remember warning either. I, I don't but that's not to say that they didn't say something to them about getting back. Part of that also is that guy's right there. Yeah. And those guys have been in his ear about that penalty that was called on the kickoff. And you know that you run, you know how it is. Oh, yeah. Sometimes guys are like, all right, I've had enough of this. Well, Rocky Ryan took an earful from that uh, and he Texas could, Tech line there. And he could very well have said verbally to them, okay, enough out of you. And if it didn't happen, then he drops the flag. We don't know exactly what he's been listening to down there, although I can tell you right now, it's not stuff he likes to hear. <laughs> Penalties, seven on the night for Texas Tech. But the enthusiasm of their team unparalleled for them in recent days. Now, recent Mike, years. Mike Leach, the former attorney, pleading his case to no avail. He lost that case. Over the middle, passes complete up to the 45 yard line for Nebraska. They're still alive. Mark LaFleur on the catch. And his you know, fourth reception of the night. You know what that penalty did? It gave Bill Callahan the license to go ahead and throw the ball downfield. Yeah. Because after the first down play, when he got a sack, they ran the ball inside. I think he was going to say, okay, let's get out of here. They got the penalty, moved him into a good spot on the field for field position. Now they throw it. Sakes, you're on the sideline. You hear any of that? Oh, I've heard a lot of things, Ron. <laughs> First of all, on the unsportsmanlike conduct after the uh, hard hit on the kickoff, they went over and told Mike Leach that that was because the team was celebrating. He said, okay, who? Now, remember, this year you're supposed to spot a number and announce who right. it is. They could not announce a number. At that point, Ruffin McNeil, the assistant head coach, well, let's say he went a little ballistic, and he was <laughs> the one that was out there on the field arguing further, and that is why they got the penalty then from the sideline because Ruffin McNeil, who's the assistant head coach, also in charge of special teams, did not like the fact that he had him pinned inside the 10-yard line, and they brought him out. 
I love Ruff and we spent some time with him yesterday and he's a passionate man to say the least. Yes, great observation too, Craig. Great and job, and if they can't tell him the number, see, my thing on it was, of course they were going to be enthusiastic there. Yeah. They just made a huge play. We can't take all the enthusiasm out of the game and tell these kids to be robots. You know, if they didn't taunt, if they didn't do that, you've got to be kidding me. That's they made a huge play. You're going to jump up and down after that one. Let's have some common sense. 21 to 3 is our score. 10 seconds left in the half for Nebraska. Daly, plenty of time. He's going for the home run ball. There's nobody there. Three red jerseys, one white jersey. And I think it was intended for Willie Amos. He was about 20 yards away from that ball. This will be the final play of the half. But if you're Texas Tech and Mike Leach, you're feeling pretty good about yourself right now, especially your offense is doing what we thought they'd do. But it's your defense has played well tonight. Very well. They've held up awfully well against the running game of Nebraska, forced them into throwing the ball, which is exactly what they've wanted. And it's worked out very well. Now if they can just get out of here without anything crazy happening, it'll be a great half for Texas Tech. Daily. That's not going to be anything, and that's the way the first half is going to end. Mike Leach will probably make his feelings known as he leaves the field, but Joe Daly and company find themselves on the short end of the stick. Bill Callahan will head to the locker room, try to retool things here at halftime. But Texas Tech has shocked Nebraska, leading 21 to 3, looking for their first win ever over the Huskers. Nebraska 7-0 against these Red Raiders of Texas Tech. That concludes the first half of college football on TBS, part of Big PlayStation Saturday. And after this break, we'll go to Ernie Johnson in our studios in Atlanta. Welcome back to college football on TBS, part of Big PlayStation Saturday. As we get set to start the third quarter, the score is Texas Tech. 21 Nebraska three Nebraska had given up only three touchdowns in the previous four games they've given up three tonight along with Charles Davis I'm Ron Thula now this Texas Tech offense is doing pretty much what we thought it would it would do but I think the Texas Tech defense has really surprised us tonight they deserve a bunch of credit because Nebraska came into the game one of the top teams in the country at running the football which is supposed to be a weakness of the Texas Tech defense they've handled that very well and handled their pass pass coverage responsibilities equally as well only gave up three points that came after a sudden change a turnover against the tech offense an interception by Daniel Bullets put Nebraska in great shape but they stiffened right away and only gave up a field goal by David Dykes that barely got over the crossbar well let's check our Levi's game summary and the numbers are very very telling especially that time of possession but it's not what you think now when you look at time of possession Nebraska is dominating that to almost 21 minutes worth to Texas Tech's nine minutes worth but Mike Leach the head coach of Texas Tech has always told us we don't care about that it's the number of plays that we run well Nebraska is dominating that also 50 to 31 which tells you that Texas Tech is maximizing the number of plays that they've, they've been given to run and turning it into points 21 of them thus far this evening but as they say still a lot of football left to be played the Texas Tech has to be feeling good now remember at the start of the game we weren't sure what was going on with the toss of the coin, but Texas Tech will kick it away, and Nebraska will receive the second half kickoff, and they'll begin first and ten from their own 20-yard line. Craig, you had a chance maybe to visit with one or two of the coaches. What do you have? Well, also the officials, Ron, because at the beginning of the game, we told you that we thought that Nebraska would get the ball again at the second half. I thought the referee, John Lurie, he said that is what happened. Nebraska won the toss. They elected to defer. He then went to the Texas Tech captains. They said, we will defend the south goal. He said, are you sure? That means that Nebraska may get the ball twice. They go, no, we want the south goal. I asked Mike Leach why he wanted the south goal. He said it doesn't matter. It doesn't care. He does not believe that his captain said that. He said they wanted the ball. So there's a discrepancy there. Also, as far as that celebration penalty that Ruffin McNeil was so upset about he was told at halftime it was number 12 Chad Johnson well, according to Ruffin McNeil all he did was show a little bit of excitement which is what you're supposed to do in football that's exactly the point Greg, that uh, Charles was making agreed and unless they told me that there was a taunt involved then I totally disagree with the call these kids have to have the opportunity to celebrate getting downfield momentum's going their way Texas Tech has never beaten Nebraska and they have the pressure on them right now. Mm -hmm. They made a fantastic play. Should not have had that call. Well, you can see the tackle breakdown. Look at Nebraska. Their defensive line, only two tackles. Look, look how even it is for 
Texas Tech. Well, it tells you about styles of offense. Yeah. You know, I'll cover that after this play's over. Pass is complete up to the 26-yard line. Ross Pilkington on the, on the reception. See, what it means is style of offense, because Texas Tech throws the ball so much, they don't have that many plays near the line of scrimmage, so Nebraska's defensive line is not going to make very many tackles because they're not running it inside very much. The secondary, which has made 17 tackles, that's where all the plays are going to occur against Texas Tech. With Nebraska, it'll be a little more even because they run the ball so much more inside the tackles. Well, Nebraska 4 for 11 on third down conversions in that first half. Third down and four. Taylor's pass complete. Nothing but daylight. LaFleur to the 10. Touchdown, Nebraska. Mark LaFleur, the junior from Omaha, Nebraska, a 74 yard touchdown. Catch and run. The longest for Daly this year, the longest for LaFleur. During the first half, I kept mentioning how the Texas Tech defenders were really starting to snug up to the receivers of Nebraska. And as I saw Joe Daly throw the pass, I thought, oh, no. They've got great coverage, but it snuck through. And once the tackle was missed, Mark LaFleur went the distance and gives Nebraska a lot of hope. Texas Tech, that is only the second touchdown they've given up in the third quarter this year, but it's a biggie, and the lead has been cut to 11. Mark LaFleur coming into tonight, four receptions, 25 yards. Tonight, five receptions, 110 yards, including a career-long 74-yarder. And has cut this Texas Tech lead down to 21-10 again. Texas Tech thought they should have had the ball here in the second half. The short kick down at the four-yard line. Johnny Mack looking for some room, gets a break, trips over the 25-yard line. That touchdown by Nebraska, total broken coverage by Tech. Well, Ruffin McNeil, the assistant head coach, always says a clear mind equals fast legs, a cloudy mind equals slow legs. Well, they were cloudy there because they weren't sure about the coverage. You saw Nazir, uh, Nazir Udin, Khalid, number 26, looking. Fletcher Session, number 42, hands both hands in the air like he's looking for the coverage call. Ball snapped. LaFleur gets inside. Fletcher Session even interfered a little bit. LaFleur made the catch and went all the way. They weren't quite so sure about what they were going to do. Hard to carry out your assignment when you're not ready to go. Well, and after the kick, another penalty against Texas Tech. So instead of being up at the 25-yard line, they're back at the 10-yard line. Well, remember in the first half, we said that, that Nebraska needed a big defensive series when they were down 14-0. Here's another opportunity because they can get the momentum back on their side after that touchdown if they can hold Tech here. Texas Tech, 21 yards rushing, 100 yards in penalties. Gumby, plenty of time. The safety valve pass incomplete. Should have taken about 10 miles per hour off that velocity. Intended for Jared Hicks. See Hicks curling inside. Where does he go with the ball? Where does he go with the ball? Where does he go with the ball? There's a receiver who was a safety valve right there. Nehemiah Glover. Not necessarily meaning that the ball needed to go there. That should have been a completion. But Nehemiah Glover, who was just standing there, mm -hmm. he's a total safety valve. If everything breaks down, there's always one guy that you can dump the ball to in Mike Leach's offense. They were playing 10 yards off it. Nebraska now with six on the line. They run it. Nebraska penetrates. Getting up over the 10, maybe to the 11-yard line, Orion Henderson. That's the first time I think we've seen Nebraska really jam that defensive line like that. They did a great job. That was Lakeven Smith, number 66, doing that for the defensive coordinator, Kevin Cosgrove, who was in your picture. There's Lakeven Smith. He had a good, nice play in the first half, too, on the shovel pass. For a minute now, the signal's coming in from Kevin Cosgrove. Holding up to two and then waving his arms like he's ready to take off. When I was in college, we had, we had that kind of signal. It's called 2-3. Mm -hmm. It meant a combo cover, coverage, too deep coverage for the secondary, combo about whether you have man or zone, depending on the route the receiver took. On third down and nine, Nebraska rushes three. Cumbie gets it out of the flat. First down to Haverty and then some. 
Gets up to the 25 to the 27 yard line. Chad Seavers, the senior out of Valley, Nebraska, runs him out. What happens here is that, right, the receiver, there's Haverty. He's just running away from the defender, Seavers, number 54, who's a linebacker. Wide receiver, linebacker, who's going to win that battle nine times out of 10? And they did it again, a 16 yard gain for Trey Haverty on that play. There you see the Nebraska defensive signals by Kevin Cosgrove. See, they got 221. That's two backs in the backfield with the receiver set. Nebraska rushes five. Cumbie has time. Here comes the pocket, collapsing around him back at the 20 yard line. Jay Moore, the sophomore out of Elkhorn, Nebraska. The former running back in high school, he was a pretty dominant running back in high school. Take a look here. Sonny Cumbie still has time, but the coverage is better downfield. And Bernard Thomas, number five, you didn't see him in your picture. He ended up taking away. Remember the guy we were talking about, the outlet the guy? That's where Sonny Cumbie wanted to go with the ball. Everything broke down. There's always one guy to go with. Bernard Thomas took that away. Sonny Cumbie had to take the sack. We want to thank Allstate for providing tonight's goal post game. You're in good hands with Allstate. On second and 15, Cumbie flares it off to the side to Henderson. Barely gets back to the original line of scrimmage. Courtney Grixby, the true freshman out of Omaha Central, coming up to make the stop. Grixby, one of those true freshmen for Nebraska, that they think this young man's got an incredible future. Yeah, they think he's got a senior mentality. He's already started two ball games for Lornell McPherson. Watch number 63 in the open field. Bam, right there. Manny Ramirez, big time block. I thought that play would pop bigger when I saw the block. Great job by Nebraska rallying to the football and stopping it. But Grixby, number 26, he definitely has a bright future. 52,954 on hand tonight. More than a sellout. Cumbie's pass, short hop, intended for Haverty. And Cumbie is down, slow to get up. Again, the pass rush now, getting into getting in, into shape for Nebraska. Number 90, Adam Carricker. Number 54, Chad Sievers. They decided to meet at the quarterback to have a little discussion. And that time it worked very well. Sonny Cumbie had no place really to go with the football. An errant throw. And Nebraska, after the touchdown, the Blackshirts did their job. They get to take over the football again. And Alex Reyes standing at his 12, kicking with the win. Tino Panico down at the 30 yard line. It's a high spiraling kick, turning over. Panico at the 27 yard line, and that's where he's going to go down. 45 yards on the kick, backwards, one or two yards. Well, Nebraska scored on their first offensive possession of the second half. They have the football again, down by 11. Eleven twenty-one to play in the third quarter. Texas Tech led twenty-one to three at halftime. And Nebraska scored on their first possession of the second half, and they have the football now. Ball is on the twenty-eight yard line, and they'll keep it on the ground with Ross. You know, one thing Bill Callahan likes is communication with his quarterback. He's trying to build these quarterbacks up, but he has great communication on not only plays they like, but what they don't like. Yeah, Bill Callahan bringing the pro approach to Nebraska, and what he does, he and Jay Norvell, they meet with the quarterbacks at the end of the week and say, what plays do you like for this week? What plays don't you like in order to put together a game plan? Remember, you can't meet as long in college as you do in the pros, so that communication no. with your quarterback is even more important at this level. Bailey, pass, complete, nope, dropped it. Down at the 42-yard line, and you see jo uh, Joe Daly running over to Bill Callahan just about after every play, or at least getting close to the sideline. You're seeing it there. In order to get the play call, that way you don't have to run it in or signal it. So we look at the leaders for Nebraska. As expected, Daly, of course, the quarterback, he's gone the whole way as he has most of this season, 187 pass yards, the one interception that hurt them. Corey Ross, 14 carries for his 50 yards, and Mark LaFleur, we just saw the big one. They started the half here, 80 yards on the touchdown pass. Mm -hmm. He's their leading receiver. Third down and seven. Five-man rush, pocket collapses, and so does Daly. At the 30-yard line, Deke Bake, the tra junior transfer out of Sacramento, California, with the sack. 
was commonly known as a coverage sack because Joe Daly had time to plant, set, look, and then the pressure got to him, had nowhere to go with the football downfield. I've talked about this all night. The coverage of the secondary of Texas Tech has been excellent all evening long. The Nebraska receivers have had trouble getting free on their routes. Second sack by this Texas Tech defense. Nebraska had given up only three coming into the game. Amendola, the hit man, standing back in his 30-yard line, but it's going to get a pretty good roll, and they're just going to let it settle down at the 30. 39 yards on the kick. Well, this Texas Tech defense, last year they were so bad, but tonight they've stepped up to the challenge. This is early in the game. Adell Duckett, their defensive end, tipped the ball, intercepted it himself. Joe Daly trying to scramble for yardage. And there's Corey Ross getting hit in the backfield, which is where the Texas Tech defense has played much of the game. They've moved the line of scrimmage back towards the Nebraska offensive line and moved it back towards the quarterback, Lyle Setencich. The defensive coordinator has to be pleased at what he's seen thus far. Lyle Setencich, who gave Mike Leach his first coaching job at Cal Poly. From an attorney to an assistant coach in college football. Not bad jump. Texas Tech first and ten. Nebraska goes back to the four-man rush. They throw it out to the 35-yard line. Johnny Mack scampers his way to the 40 to the 41-yard line. James Siegel coming up to make the stop. The junior out of Grand Island, Nebraska. Sort of a hybrid defensive back linebacker, but when Johnny Mack gets the ball, those wheels move about 100 miles an hour down there. Take a look at the splits here. Offensive line. See how wide they are between the offensive linemen? Why again? Why do they do that? Because that gives them bigger passing lanes, bigger running lanes. A lot of people say, well, the defensive line can shoot the gap, get mm -hmm. inside. Well, it's a it's a feast or famine thing. If you shoot the gap and don't get there, they'll just ride you inside, and that creates a bigger crease and a bigger opening. They're creating so much space for their receivers that when they throw the ball out into space, that's a one-on-one -on -one tackle. Very difficult for defenses to match up, and the speed of Texas Tech, we've seen it tonight, much better than the speed of Nebraska's defense. And you're also making your defensive end run about 15 yards. He wants to get the quarterback. In other words, you make a 4-3 sprinter yeah. into 4-5 oh, yeah. because you moved him out by distance. Well, the measurement was first down at the 41-yard line. Let's see how Tech responds. Pass to Haverty. He trips over the 47-yard line. And a penalty flag is thrown. There was one Nebraska player among five Texas Tech players, and now we've got a penalty. And Tech guys were clapping. They think that it's going to go against Nebraska. Personal foul, number five, Nebraska, 15 yards, first foul. Now Bernard Thomas is the culprit. But I think that they got the number wrong. I think it's really 55. But watch this catch by Haverty, number seven. He was moving to the outside, ball came inside. He was able to adjust his body, great control. Soft hands, made the catch, nice gain, and now they get to pick up additional yardage with the penalty. That's only the second penalty on Nebraska. I know that they're showing Bernard Thomas, but I'm telling you guys, it was really 55, Wally Muhammad. That's who, they, that's who it should have been on. Bernard's catching the grief. <laughs> <laughs> Well, now they're making sure the chains. I think they got them all confused over there. They're knotted up. You got to send Craig Sager down there to help them unknot those chains. Look at that. You can see it's all kind of crunched up down there in the far side. Huff, let's go get some new ones. Yep, quicker. Come on. Come on. Now, we talked about a 4 oh, three the making 4 5. Yeah, there you go. Let's see how this guy does. Now, you know, we are in rodeo country. <laughs> can, can, he rope the, can he rope that calf? Get it twisted up and get it back in time. Now he goes, forget about it. First downs are now 9.9 .9 yards. I know Bernard Thomas ended up on the bench, so maybe it was him. You know, 5 or 55. I thought it was 55. The coaches will sort that out in film. Oh, They'll get it figured out. They'll know before they land in Lincoln. First and 10 for Texas Tech. All on the Nebraska 37. Henderson, he has stacked up. Good job by defensive line. Nebraska led by Barrett Rue. That's his fourth tackle. He is now just four away from the all-time Nebraska record. But you see, notice you're saying only his fourth tackle? Yeah. The reason being, we showed the graph earlier about the number of tackles by the defensive linemen, the linebackers, and the, and the defensive backs. Barrett Rue doesn't get as many opportunities to tackle people tonight mm -hmm. because they're playing more in space. 
See, Baron Root's not getting guys running at him all night long like a good running team will do. Because he has to go and chase so much, look at the tackles all time, or he may still get the record tonight, but it'll be more difficult against this style. Gumby again with plenty of time, jumps it off the man. Cuts away. Inside the 35, inside the 30, and the little 5-7 dynamo bowling ball gets down to the 27-yard line. Take a look here. That's Johnny Mack, all right? What he becomes is the outlet guy after Sonny Cumbie goes through all of his progression. See, he checks the block. No need to block. He just moves out. Cumbie looked downfield, downfield, downfield. Nothing there. He goes to his outlet guy who checked out of the backfield once he realized he had no blitz pickup responsibilities. That's what's built into Mike Leach's offense. Someone's always available, and it's hard to take away every option. Well, there's seven guys in double figures now, catches for the year. Mack now in double figures, third down and one. Mack spinning away, gets down to the 25 to the 24-yard line. Barrett Root, his fifth back, tackle. Three away now from Jerry Murtaugh's re record. Rivals.com is your football recruiting source. Who will be the stars of tomorrow? Check out Rivals.com and find out today. And we have yet another penalty on the field. Jerry Murtaugh, by the way, is now the linebacker coach at Omaha Creighton. First of all, number one, Nebraska. Number eight, Texas Tech. He's offset, dead ball, the next down. Alani and McPherson, the culprits. Well, we worked last week with Darren Elliott, a former goalie in the NHL. Yeah. He would call that chippy. Right? That's, That's, right. What, they chippy. Use it. That's what they use in That's hockey. Right. Things are getting a little chippy down there. Guys getting in each other's grill, woofing a little bit right now. As the game becomes more and more intense as we go along. And how about Mike Leach varying the line splits, going wide, coming tight, going medium, not letting Nebraska get comfortable with what they're showing on offense. Here comes the blitz. Texas Tech, great job picking it up, but not too long. Gumby is sacked by Titus Adams, the junior out of Omaha. See, once again, look at this. Look at these splits. All right, they got the, they got plenty of space here. But what happens is the coverage downfield is so good that that allowed, I believe it's Lakeven Smith, right, number 66, to loop around, excuse me, 96 Titus Adams, to loop around and make the sack. There's Sonny Cumbie under, under pressure tonight. Only one sack, but the hurries, the hits, the knockdowns, 14 other ones. Those affect you as a quarterback also. Second down and nine, the splits are now wide. Cumbie throws it out of the flat, again to Matt. Little stutter stopping, gets inside the 20, down to the 17-yard line. Shane Siegel's the one who laid the wood to him. Of course, Shane Siegel's dad, Bob, a hoops legend from Nebraska. How about this move by Johnny Mack? Look at the agility on this play. Boom, 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 boom. And it cuts back inside on Kellen Houston, who really did a good job because he appeared to be fooled, but was able to fold back inside after the move and help on the tackle anyway. But the maneuver did gain Johnny Mack an additional two or three yards. Now brings up a third down and four from the 18. Now Nebraska moving six guys up to the line. Now they have seven. They rush five. Cumbies pass complete. Inside the 15, down to the 12-yard line. First down, Texas Tech. Bristol Olamua, his third reception of the night. When you need that four down, four yards, I'm going to throw it to Big Bristol. And he's a big guy who can run a short pattern and then use his body to ward off a defender in order to make the catch. How about that? Three receptions, 27 yards. That's 17 receptions coming into tonight. First and 10 from the 12. Very intelligent route runner, too. Heard exactly where the first down line was. Now come to working, lifts his face. Pass is complete to Haveny, shaking and baking. Gets down to the six yard line. Maybe in Washington on the stop. That is only his second tackle of the night. Pick up of six on the play. Ron, coming into the game tonight, I had a chance to talk with a longtime observer of Texas Tech football, and he told me what he thought the issue was with Tech's offense thus far, as if you, they had many issues, was that they were much better out in open space in the field than they were when right. the field was condensed because he thought Sonny Cumbie didn't have that much experience. When things got condensed, there were so many people in a short space, he didn't make the right decisions. That's not the case tonight. Right, he jumps it off again. Touchdown, Matt.
Johnny Mack's third touchdown reception of the year, first of the night. It came from seven yards out, and Nebraska, who had only given up three touchdowns all year, have now given up their fourth tonight. The key was not only the run by Mack, but the blocking, girls. Look at those guys getting out in front. The big fellas love to get out in space and clear it for Johnny Mack, number four. And Texas Tech's just having a ball right now, up 28 to 10 in the third quarter in Lubbock. Texas Tech tradition on Thursday night, they wrap up the Will Rogers statue. But the key to this, my friends, and to put this as nicely as I can, the backside of the horse faces College Station, Texas. You can draw any conclusion you want, but that's what it looks like. And, and it remains unwrapped, <laughs> correct? It remains unwrapped. <laughs> well, that's, that's rivalry for you. Oh, yeah. Look at this record here. 21 to nine at Big 12 games here at this stadium. And I can tell you, this is my first trip to Lubbock. It is an atmosphere that is very difficult for opposing teams to handle. Well, Nebraska's lost their two last two conference road openers, and they're on the short end of the stick now. Take a look at the touchdown, Ron, because these are the guys that you need to look at first. Right in there, the interior. Because what happens is, when they come, everybody comes this way, for their blocks, watch. Here they come, moving out, moving out, moving out. Out front, number 77, Dylan Gandy. Number 63, Manny Ramirez. They clear the way. Easy pass yeah. for Johnny Mack to get in. Manny Ramirez was foaming at the mouth because he knew he had a great block coming up. And of course, he holds the best press record here at Tech. Yeah, on, only a, a mere 525 mere. pounds. Mere. Yeah, he's a little upset because he said start, I could have done more. Number 75, more. offense, <laughs> five yards. Remains first down. Oh, man, he said, Mir, for a minute, I'm going to knock you out of your kick. <laughs> <laughs> regular, regular, regular. And our first and ten line is brought to you by Home Depot. And the first and ten line is at the 30-yard line. First down and 15 after the penalty against Nebraska. 4-16 here in quarter number three. Look at Mike Leach. They say he's only an offensive guru. Awfully interested in what his defense is doing right now. Has to be very impressed. Bailey's pass. Everybody had their backs turned. It looked like it was intended for Pilkington. Do you think they're losing Joe Daly in his confidence right now? I don't know if they're quote unquote losing him in his confidence. Well, yeah. Okay, let me. It's a great, it's a great question because I don't want to say that the young man has exited because he has not, but he needs some successes. He yeah. needs some plays to go well for him to kind of get him back and get a little more snap in it. Because right now he's, he's really wanting a big play to happen. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when you want it so much, you force things a little bit. That last route that Bill Callahan called though was a route that was a deep breaking route trying to get this defensive back, get his back to push back off of him in coverage. And Nebraska doesn't like what they see, so they're going to burn a timeout with 4-11 to play in the third. Nebraska scored on their first possession of quarter number three. Texas Tech has answered, and that's why it is 28-10. to 10. We'll step aside more from Lubbock, Texas, in a Big 12 showdown, the north and the south, after this. Bill Callahan is meticulous, he's tenacious, he's hardworking. He says working with these kids at Nebraska is great because they have an ingrained work ethic, great pride, and he knows that these kids can overcome whatever deficit that's facing them, be it this year or in the future. Even when Little Red is standing on his head. There you go. Man. <laughs> Second down and 15. Daly looking, throwing pass, almost picked off. Antonio Huffman, who's done a great job tonight. Greg Sager on the sideline. Let's talk about some quarterbacks, Craig. Well, it's been such a learning experience for Joe Daly. We talked to him. He said, you know, it takes three to four years for an NFL quarterback to fully understand each and every formation and how these plays work. And he says there's 145 of them. As you mentioned, Coach Callahan trying to make it easier for him. He does have those plays listed on a card on his belt, but he does go over and talk to the coach after each and every play. Bill Callahan says he's a unique kid. He's always trying to learn, always trying to look for the next direction, the next play. Huh? Absolutely, says You made a great point. Daly on third down and 15. 
Throws over the middle and just high over the head. Incomplete of Isaiah Flewellen. And unfortunately now for Joe Daly, because he has 145 plays and he has all this executing, he wants to do so well. He yeah. really wants to please his coach that right now, unfortunately, he's not throwing passes. He's hoping yeah. passes. You understand the difference? Well, it's like a pitcher who's aiming a fastball. He's aiming it instead of, instead of firing it down there. Right now, he's got so much on the, on the ball because he wants it to happen. Yeah. He's not getting anywhere near the receivers, and that's unfortunate for him because he's worked awfully hard to try and do well. Well, field position is so big in this game. Kicking against the wind now is Nebraska, and it's a low kick. Amendola from his own 40. Cuts up field, looks for a block, gets one, breaks a couple of tackles, gets down to the Nebraska 42-yard line. Let's take a look at tonight's All-State good hands play. You're in good hands with All-State. We've had a couple of good hands play, but we'll go to Mr. LaFleur. That'll work, 74 yards for Mark LaFleur, a career high. And that's our All-State good hands play. You know, Charles, you and I always talk about in the third quarter when a team gets up, how big defensive possessions yes. are. This falls into that category, doesn't it? Because Definitely. if not, you can't get down that much to Texas Definitely. Tech. And Texas Tech has had great third quarters all year, 61 to 10 coming into this game. Great field position. Don't be surprised to take the shot downfield. So Sonny Cumbie audibles and goes out the shotgun now. Looking right, throwing right, completing right. Bellotti out of the reception down to the 32-yard line. One well, of those last drives, the man was Johnny Mack. Yes, the song says, Jimmy Mack, when are you coming back? This is Johnny Mack, and he's going away. How about that on the pass reception? Then the great move inside to gain additional yardage. And then the screen with a little help from Big 63, Manny Ramirez. And Johnny Mack takes it into the end zone. Yeah, he's so little he can hide behind Coach McVeigh over there on the sideline. Yes, he can. Pick up of nine on the play. They keep it on the ground. Henderson, left side, a lot of running room. Inside the 20, looking for a block. Stops, cuts back, still on his feet. Inside the 10, down to the eight yard line. McPherson finally making the stop. Who says Texas Tech can't run? Watch the cut by Torian Henderson. And who is that he runs away from? Number 38, Barrett Rude. So quick in the hole, so sudden. Trying to pick up some additional blocking. Ran into his guys back into traffic. But what a terrific run. The play started one way. He made the cut and came back to the other side for a big pickup for Texas Tech. Number five in career touchdowns for Tech. Two away from Byron Morris. The Bamster. Yep, for Torian Henderson. And look where they are. Splits are still wide, even though they're inside the 10. This one going from the 8. Inside the 5, down to the 3 yard line. Jared Hicks, already with a couple of touchdown receptions to his credit. Three catches tonight in the ballgame. The nation's leading receiver. If this were a boxing match, right now, Mike Leach and his guys would be thinking we are wearing them out because we're going mm -hmm. to the body. Bang, bang, bang. And they're trying to wear them down in a big way. And I think that Mike Leach and his crew feels like if they score here, they are in total command of this football game. Bill Callahan was concerned about all the passing and wearing down his defense. Having a rush every time. Gumby looks left, throws right. Touchdown, Texas Tech. Bristol Olamora, his fifth touchdown reception of the year. So Olamua right here, route is right there, very simple, getting into the end zone. Because a blitz is on, Daniel Bullock's number 14 just bypasses Olamua, never touches him. Barrett Root has to have the coverage. Very difficult assignment for the inside linebacker. The extra point is good. And one more look at it, he puts that big body, 260 plus pounds on the goal line, makes the catch. And Texas Tech over 400 yards off his on a defense that has only given up on an average 255 a game. The difference is speed. As the students celebrate there, 
You know, you, you, you ask them to go do some push-ups in a gym class, they'll tell you no. But you come here to a ball game <laughs> you and you're it. celebrating, how many you want me to do? And they'll do a bunch of them. But the difference in this ball game for, that I've seen is speed between mm -hmm. the two teams. Nebraska, as tough as they are on defense, the Texas Tech kids can run away from them in most situations. And that's been, that's been evident most of this evening. Well, Sonny Cumbie, three touchdown passes tonight. He's been kind of understated, but he's done a pretty good job just directing this attack. You can tell that he is more and more confident oh, yeah. running this offense. How about the last play, the last series when we saw him go to the audible mm -hmm. and come out with a nine-yard gain on the pass? Look at the offensive production for the game. 7.9 yards of play for Tech. That's amazing. That's just down slightly from the half when they were out of the 9.5 right before the end of the half. But, but the big one, of course, five touchdowns to go. one. That's what you care about the most. Ring those bells. Well, Mike Leach feels that you become a good quarterback by repetition. That's why he picks somebody at the start of the year and sticks with them. He says, why alternate? Because then you may have two mediocre quarterbacks instead of one good one. That's a great point, Rob. What does he call it? Stability through repetition. If you only, if you have, if you have two quarterbacks, you think you're getting ready. His idea is you have two mediocre ones, or you don't have one quarterback at all. He picks his guy. He sticks with him through, through thick and thin. The criticism of Sonny Cumbie. I don't think there'll be much after this ball game if things continue the way they're going. And all of a sudden, people will say, you know that Mike Leach? He knows what he's doing with quarterbacks. Obviously, Cliff Kingsbury, B.J. Simmons, now Sonny Cumbie. I think Sonny Cumbie's actually Steve Kerr. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, you've you never seen them together, have you? You're talking about TNT, old <laughs> Steve Kerr? <laughs> Steve <laughs> Kerr! Duke at about eight yards deep, and Green's going to have to take it again. Ernie Johnson, how about a little update on Florida State? Well, the Seminoles with their hands full against Syracuse tonight, Ron. 10-10 game early fourth quarter when Leon Washington busts loose 45 yards. That'll get her done. 17-10 Florida State with the lead over Syracuse. Still a lot of time left in that one, Ron. All right, thanks, E.J. And of course, following our game, you'll have all the highlights and scores from around the country as Mr. Mack continues to keep the legs warm because it is pretty chilly tonight. A little mild surprise with Florida State Syracuse. I didn't expect that to be a seven point game in the fourth quarter. Yeah. You know, carry your dome. Well, Joe Daly will go surprise. back to work. Try to chip into this 25 point advantage with 224 left to play. And we've got a new quarterback, Bo Davis, the true freshman out of Venice, California. Now, this is interesting. This is unusual. Has the white flag been thrown up by Bill Callahan on Joe Daly? I don't think it's a white flag. You know what I think it is? I think it's a protection move. You asked me the question a little while ago that I waffled a little bit on about his confidence. I think that Bill Callahan is recognizing that Joe Daly's confidence is flagging a little bit. And rather than leave him out there and let more confidence seep out of the young man, he's getting him out now, letting him know, hey, don't worry about it. I'm taking, you know, I care about you. Let's see what Bo can do. Maybe it's a series. Maybe it's the rest of the game. They'll work on Joe Daly a little bit after this one's over. Three freshman out of Venice, California. Craig Sager, what do you have? Well, not only do we have a new quarterback, we also have a new referee. John Laurie, the referee we talked about, has become ill. He has left the field. He's being attended to now on the sidelines. And Claire Gosman has taken over the white hat and is now our referee for the rest of the game. John is sitting over on the Nebraska bench right now, has some ice around his left leg, and uh, apparently is through for the evening. I'll tell you what, I've seen John Laurie a long time. He is one tough official. And he must be really hurting for him to take a seat. Yeah, let's hope that he's okay and Absolutely. gets better real soon. Claire Bosman moves from line judge to the referee position. That means they'll work with one guy less the rest of the game. Now yeah, there's a fumble. The ball is loose. Let's see if Tech has it. The officials say yes. New quarterback, new snap, fumble. How many times have you seen it? Not unexpected. If you're Lyle Setensich, the defensive coordinator, you recognize there's a new quarterback. So what do you do? You bring people at it. Shotgun snap. Bo Davis getting his first action in college. I'm almost willing to guarantee that he was looking at the rush as much as he was looking at the ball. That took his concentration away. Ball fell. Texas Tech's in business inside the 15 of Nebraska. Watch them try and strike quickly right here, right now. I'm not so sure that wasn't a, a bad snap, yeah. to be honest with you. I don't think it was all that great of but a snap. But with your count now as your quarterback position, to make one step over and yeah. grab it. 
from the 14-yard line. Again, Cumbie changing plays. Mack moves over to his left, and they're going to call a timeout. Play clock was running down on him. Good presence by Sonny Cumbie. Well, you talk about when Mike Leach took over back in 2000, he had Cliff Kingsbury for a few years, and, and, and Cliff had his own style. He was able to make it the, the, the easy pass, and B.J. Simmons, probably the quickest release, Charles, of, of all three of them. And the biggest gun on him, too. B.J. Simmons had a big league arm, and Sonny Cumbie, Mike Leach told us, is a combination between the two. Kingsbury, more of a dart thrower, Simmons, more of the downfield bomber, and in between them, Sonny Cumbie, but the production from each one of them, so terrific. What Cliff Kingsbury had over the other two, is that he was a starter in Mike Leach's system for three seasons. Right. B.J. Simmons got one year as a fifth-year senior. Same thing with Sonny Cumby. I think people now are going to get the idea that when Mike Leach picks a quarterback, he can play. That's people right. question it with B.J. Simmons. Mm -hmm. They question it with Sonny Cumby. And each time, the production is terrific. So let's go ahead and say, when Mike Leach says he's my quarterback, you might as well mark it down. The kid's going to be pretty good. Yeah, he's got a couple, three guys waiting in the wings to take over when Sonny Cumby moves on. First and 10 from the 14. Texas Tech can get a first down. And you see the offensive linemen were pointing to make sure they got everybody blocked. Nebraska with three on the line. They bring up a fourth. And Cumbie will change the play and go over center. Matt bounces to the outside. He needs one block. Gets it. Touchdown. Great call, Sonny Cumbie. Changed the play, Charles, and it worked. Watch this. Watch Sonny Cumbie now. He changed the play, but watch the ball handling off of an audible. Fakes the pass, hands it on an inside handoff to Johnny Mack. Again, great blocking up front. That allowed him to get to the corner. That was number 64, Cody Campbell. Johnny Mack's quickness gets him into the end zone. And Texas Tech obviously in control of this ball game. How about the block by Hicks, kicking him out on the outside, too? They got blocking from everybody on that play. But you got to give a lot of kudos to Sonny Cumby for changing that play and for that man, Johnny Mack, with his second touchdown of the night. And there's the mask rider. Watch this block. Have you that stopped? was Hicks, number yeah. 88, to the top left of your screen, riding out of defender. And Johnny Mack is having himself a great night this evening. It's not just Torian Henderson in the backfield. They actually, they actually have a good one-two punch with these guys and smiles all the way around because they are sensing the forgetting that monkey off their back. Yep. Nebraska 7-0 in the all-time series. All things could get interesting in the Big 12. You've got Missouri. You've got Nebraska still in it. Don't count Bill Snyder out. Don't count anybody out in the north and in the south. Oklahoma in control. Texas, Texas Tech. Uh, you know, it's still, you know, Oklahoma's got their own destiny in their hands, but the rest of the battles are pretty doggone good. Remember a couple seasons ago, it went down to the last game of the year with Texas Tech at Oklahoma for the Big 12 South title. And last year, Texas Tech missed by one game an opportunity to play for the Big 12 South. So, long way to go. 2.03 left in the quarter. Nebraska first and 10 from their own 20. Next week, we will head out to the West. We'll be in Berkeley, California. As Cal set to host the UCLA Bruins, we'll kick it off at 7 o'clock Eastern time. And that's going to be a good one. Cal, the disappointing loss today to uh, USC. But they're still going to be in the thick of that Pac-10 race. And you can see USC, Arizona State. Great job by Dirk Cutter this year. And uh, Carl Durrell has his squad at 1-0 in the Pac-10. So you can see just how important that is. And they've recovered well from the season opening loss at home to Oklahoma State. Now people around the country say, well, that's not so bad because Oklahoma State's undefeated right now. Yeah. And UCLA has come back and reeled off three straight victories since then. And Bo Davis is going to try it again. Goes up top. The floater is intercepted by Texas Tech. Vincent Meeks with the pick. Davis thought he had it in the hands of Willie Amos. Watch the coverage. To the left side of your screen, Nazir Udin. He gets his hands on him downfield, which you're really not, not supposed to do. But the officials determined it wasn't that big. See how his hand's right there, and he's riding Willie Amos a little bit? I think Nebraska would say, hold it a second. 
when the ball's in the air in college, you're not supposed to have your hands on the receiver. But remember, they are one official short due to the injury to the official John Lurie. So it changes your mechanics on how you cover things downfield. In any event, Texas Tech benefited on that play and got the interception. This is the most points Nebraska has given up since November of 2002 to Kansas State. And again, Texas Tech on a roll. Malani lost the football, and it will come back. Greg Sager having an update on us for uh, John Lurie. Yes, John Laurie has been taken off the field. He is back in the trainer's room being attended to by the doctors. He talked to me. He said he got kicked in the back of the leg. And then after he tried to push off on the turf, he just had a bad feeling in his leg every time he tried to move. So they are down one official. However, there's an auxiliary official here by the name of Jim McLean, who works a lot of games here, also in the WAC. He is going to join the crew in between quarters. So we'll be back to our seven officials at that point. Now, John Laurie's been doing this for 24 years. I asked him if I've ever had to leave a game early before. He said, yeah, I think uh, 14 years ago I broke an arm. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they probably had to talk him out to, to, to get him off the field. Craig, I'm coming to you after this play. John's a good man. Gumby throws it out of the flat. Pass is complete. Glover gets over the 40 up to the 43-yard line. Craig, you played in college. You played on AstroTurf, I believe, when you were at Northwestern. And covering sidelines, pro fields, college fields all these years, you've been on the grass, the field turf, momentum turf, the, the, the turf, whatever. How difficult is it when you have an injury to be walking on this hard surface that you have here at Texas Tech, this AstroTurf? Well, I appreciate your comments about my career, but most of us spending as a cheerleader on the sidelines and really the Wildcat doing <laughs> but, flips. But it's still but yes, I had a lot of legs were still a lot on of bounce, it, right? A lot of bruises, <laughs> but this field has been here for five years. They're still paying for it, but once they have it paid for, they do plan to change it. Gumby's pass complete up to the 48-yard line first half. We want to update something. The official stats just came in, and they have given Barrett Rude a couple of more tackles, a couple of uh, assists on tackles, and he has now broken the record officially of Jerry Murtaugh, set back between 68 and 1970, and Barrett Rude I tell you, congratulations, especially if you're a linebacker like that in this day and age, to play all these games with all the bumps and the nicks and everything, Charles. Our hat is off to that young man. That's for sure. This is his 44th game, I believe, at Nebraska's 32nd consecutive start. He said it himself. Being on the field is a big part of it, but he got it done because he's a heck of a football player. He deserves this record. Congratulations to him. I know his father, Tom, who played here and was a captain for Nebraska and also led them in tackles the year in 1974. He's awfully proud of that young man. Now Cody Fuller makes the reception as the third quarter comes to an end. Nebraska scored on the first possession of the quarter. Thought they were going to make a game of it, but Texas Tech has come rolling back. They lead 42-10. to college football on TBS part of big PlayStation Saturday as we get set to start the fourth quarter Texas Tech is putting a thumping on Nebraska 42 to 10 Along with Charles Davis Craig Sager I'm Ron Thulin welcoming you back to Lubbock Texas Jones SBC Stadium where a crowd of over 52,900 on hand tonight to see this and this could be a coming out party for this Texas Tech team and don't think these guys are going to sit on the lead that's not Mike Leach's style He's kind of the Billy Tubbs of football. Isn't the object of the game to score? Yeah, he said if these guys worked out hard all week, I'm not going to slow them down no matter what the score is. Now they're going to keep it on the ground. Milani tries to shake and bake a little bit. Gets up over the 40 down to about the 38-yard line. That's his second rush tonight. First two of the year, as a matter of fact. Or second and third of the year. You got him carrying the ball twice tonight, right? Yep. Mike Leach signaling in to Sonny Cumbie. What he wants run. Mike Leach with that new five-year contract. They're just dotting the I's and crossing the T's right now. He's going to be here a while. He might want to go back and uh, ask for more after tonight. <laughs> <laughs> he might do that. Gerald Myers just took a just to, to the big gulp of air. On the ground. Up over the 30, inside the 25, down to the 23-yard line, Henderson. Torian Henderson's got a little scoop to it. I'm really impressed with the way Sonny Cumbie handles the football. Yeah. His ball handling, his faking, the way he does things back in the pocket. I'm really impressed with that. For a guy who's Absolutely. been a fifth-year senior who's never been on the field prior to this year, he looks awfully comfortable out there in really a short amount of time. Was this game six for him? Yep. 
400 yards total offense tonight for Sonny Cumbie. First and 10 from the 23. Cumbie looking, looking, throwing, incomplete. That was a one on three intended for Cody Fuller. Four TD passes tonight for Sonny Cumbie brings his total to 15 for the year. And look at how he's done it. Look at the fade pass, perfectly placed on that one. Then he throws another one downfield, and Hicks beats the defender. Nice screen pass to Johnny Mack. And he finishes it off with the out pattern to Bristol Olamua. Put it in the perfect spot for the tight end away from the defenders. Now he faces second and 10 from the 23. Nebraska rushes three again. Glover underneath. Still on his feet. Missing the tackles as he gets down to the 20 yard line. Pick up a four on the play. He'll bring up a third down and six. They've had a lot of missed tackles tonight. And it's not unusual against Texas Tech because everything's out in open space. And they have what they have a lot of mismatches. They have running backs and wide receivers running against linebackers. Very difficult out in this open space for the linebacker to break down, come under control, and launch a good tackle at a moving target. Kevin Cosgrove has seen Sonny Cumby throw 18 for 21 in the second half alone. Only three incompletions for Cumby here in the second half. Safety valve complete. Henderson had a nice block at that time by Cody Fuller, number 24. I think we heard it up here. We so definitely heard it up here. I felt it up here. But Cody Fuller out of Smithson Valley. Watch number 24. He's coming right at you, taking on Shane Siegel. Bam. Get his head out in front. Knocked him to the side to gain additional yardage for his wide receiver. You just mentioned Sonny Cumbie's numbers. Would you say 18 for 20, 19 for yeah. 23, or whatever that is? 18 for 21. And you know, in the second half? Yeah. Well, we're going to see a guy just like that next week from Cal, Aaron Rodgers, who began a game against number one ranked USC today, 23 for 23. Fourth and two for Texas Tech. Balls on the 15. Here comes the blitz. Something we haven't seen a lot of. They read it correctly. They get the screen pass. First down, Texas Tech. Trey Haverty. The seventh reception of the ball game. Boy, did Sonny Cumbie just read that well. And what he did was he showed a lot of patience in the pocket because he felt the rush coming. And then when he saw the Nebraska line read the play and then bounce back towards where the pass was going, that's when he released it ahead of them. No way they could catch up to it. Drew everyone to him when they tumbled to the play. Then he got to get the ball out to the receiver for a first down. Now they've got first and ten from first and goal. They're saying now from the ten. Anderson outside just runs away. Penalty flag is thrown. Still on his feet as he gets down to the two. But we've got two sets of laundry laying on the ten yard line. I think they're gonna bring this one oh, back. Yeah. I think we got a hold on the play. Now we got an update on John Lorry, a torn left calf muscle. Ouch. And here's our new referee. Holding offense, number 80, 10 yards from the spot of the foul. First down. Claire Gaussman. Now we have to say that these officials are trained for this. This is nothing that's a big shock like, you know, they shink for it to see who's going to be the <laughs> referee. I mean, there's an order of command here, and it's, and it's very obvious that when you see Jim McClain here, who's checked in as the field judge now this is something they're used to yeah because also officials go through they get here on a friday also mm -hmm. and watch film go through their progressions who what happens here on this play what happens on that play how do we cover the field if this guy goes down who moves into what spot exactly what you talked about they prepare just as hard for the game as the teams do 121 yards penalties for texas tech Ooh, mike leach is going to choose somebody out tomorrow about that Here's Cumbie over the middle. Pass is complete inside the 10 down to the seven yard line. Cody Fuller, the junior, who's also the center fielder on the baseball team, his third reception. I know his high school coach, Larry Hill. And coach Larry Hill, he teaches fundamentals at Smithson Valley High School, and you're seeing it with this young man and Cody Fuller. He's a guy that you look at him and you say, no, nah, he can't do what he does out there. But good fundamentals, and he's a much better athlete than he's given credit for. Oh, yeah. Allows him to get open and make great plays. And I know a lot of people at home are looking at the clock and looking at the score and saying, why is Tech throwing the ball so much? You mentioned it before, Ron. Mike Leach's philosophy is we run our offense no matter what the score. We don't watch the scoreboard. And if someone's get, jumping on us like that, so be it. And we just go ahead and play our game. 
Second and goal from the six. Come be in the end zone, incomplete off the hands of Olamua. And Sonny goes, oh, we had that. That would have been an excellent catch. If Olamua comes down with this one, because watch where the traffic is. Good blocking again. He's had that most of the night. Great passing lane, but see, I threw it behind yeah. him. If Olamua came down with that one, he would have told Sonny Cumbie. Yeah, and his hands are on his head. You know why? Because he knew he, it. He didn't put it in the right spot. Yeah. Yeah, if I put it in the right spot, it's a touchdown. My bad, my bad, Bristol. Catch yeah. you next time. And it could be very well this play. Well, it's third down and goal now from the six. Cumbie looking. Right over the middle, down to the two, down to the one. They're not going to give him the touchdown. Just a shade short for Olamua. Ah, oh, you get that 260 going, you think he'd get over. See how he just came right so back to him? Bristol Olamua on the play, coming from the left side of your screen, crossing over underneath to the right side. What he did was he pretended to block as the tight end, delayed and came underneath, and Sonny Cumbie hit him, and then the big fella tried to ram his way into the end zone, couldn't quite get there. Now it's fourth down. And goal. They keep it on the ground. Touchdown, Torian Henderson. Second rushing touchdown of the night for Torian Henderson, the junior out of Gatesville, Texas. Wow, what great blocking up front. Oh, they get boy. a reputation because they're a passing team, but all they can do is pass blocks. On fourth and short, you think you're going to run it inside. They chopped a big hole for Torian Henderson. Henderson adds seven more to the board, and it's a 49-10 lead by Tech. Fans, it's time to vote for your T-Mobile player of the game. And to vote, it's quite simple. You pick up your phone, and all you have to do is text A, B, C, or D. Daly, LaFleur, Cumbie, or Hicks. And then just send it to TBS, and we'll give you all the results just a little bit later on for our T-Mobile player of the game. I'm going to give a vote right now to Sonny Cumbie. I think he's done everything they needed him to do today. Pretty good vote. I think I think we find out the results in the post game with Ernie, right? Can EJ give us what the deal is? EJ will have it from the two-yard line. Green. And he is stacked up at the 12-yard line. Next week, we'll see UCLA. Tonight, they're playing Arizona. Ernie, what do you have for us? I've got a pretty good collision to show you here, Ron. Watch Drew Olson hit Mercedes Lewis, and then Lewis goes head-to-head -head with Daryl Brooks of Arizona, gathers himself, and then out of that scrum comes a touchdown and a 37-17 win for UCLA over Arizona. Drew Olson with four <laughs> touchdown passes on the night. Back to you, Ron. All right, thanks, Ernie. We thought that Mike Stoops was getting so close, you know, that tonight might have been the night, but Carl Durrell has done a good job at UCLA. Yeah, done an excellent job. They're now 4-1, and one, correct? Yep. They're going to have a heck of a game next week out at Cal. Good ball. Good ball. Good one. Good one. You know, Bill Callahan is a very positive man, and on the phone with us this week, he was very, very positive, very excited about his offense. What does he do now? I think he continues to run it because he's got to get experience for these guys doing it. He can't do it. No, no, the problem is they're not executing very well. And they just fumbled again. And I don't know who's going to come out with the football as we wait and see. It looks like Nebraska will have it back. But one of the issues you run into if you run things first yeah, out, it. Has it. How they came out of that pile with it. See, that was a, that, the quarterback exchange with the running back very tough because pro style teams tend to give 90 percent of the snaps to the starting quarterback which is Joe Daly so that means Bo Davis doesn't get that many snaps although Bill Callahan told us on the phone that number's been reduced as the season's gone on but still Daly's getting the majority of the snaps Bo Davis doesn't work with these guys very often so you put them into a ball game and things are going at full speed 
it's not easily accomplished. Yeah. You know, it's not like clockwork because they don't get that same work during the week in practice. Well, Mike Smith with the fumble recovery, the second fumble tonight that turned on Nebraska. Situation. Look at the numbers. Oh, my. Four for Nebraska and a chance for Texas Tech to score again. They slip it inside again. Nehemiah or Glover. Oh, if this was AM, you'd have to put chapstick on your lips after kissing after every touchdown. <laughs> well, let's take a look at the high school. But it's been, it's been tough all night. It started early. Adele Duckett with the interception. Joe Daly unable to complete the handoff with Corey Ross. In the deep pass downfield, a little bump and grind. Ball popped in the air by Willie Amos for the interception by Vincent Meeks. And there, miscommunication. And I should say, missed execution. Yeah. Missed execution there, quarterback and running back. And he's passed to Glover inside the five down of the three yard line. And he is stacked up for marking at about the two. You know, Mike Leach is a, like we were talking about how interesting character he was. He was in a uh, practicing attorney in Los Angeles, had some friends call Lyle Setsich and said, listen, this guy wants to be a football coach. He shows up with Lyle and he's driving this Cadillac DeVille, a 79 Cadillac DeVille. His wife says it's not the color that Mike said it was blue with a white top. His wife says it's white with a blue top. Yeah, it was a convertible. Convertible. <laughs> Little ragtop, he says it. And this was 1986 or so, yeah. right? <laughs> with, with a 79 Cadillac DeVille. 16 years later, he's coaching. Texas Tech to another score. <laughs> Nehemiah Glover, his first <laughs> touchdown reception of the year. He is now two away from the school record for touchdown receptions. Season, you thought that would be a lot. I figured he'd have the record by now. But things haven't turned out that way. Maybe now he's off the schneid. It'll happen. But they want this guy to get the record, yeah. and that's the first one towards it. Well, Mickey Peters is the record holder, but Nehemiah Glover had 29 receptions coming into tonight. No, or 29 receptions, no touchdowns, but he gets his first of the year. And Texas Tech leads by a whole bunch. There was some question just how good this Texas Tech team would be this year and would there be anything to cheer about. So far this year there has been a lot to cheer about when Mike Leach looks back he's going to say wait a minute we should be even better than this we shouldn't be at three and two we should have lost to New Mexico. We played well against Oklahoma, but his team is really showing something tonight for the rest of the conference. Yeah, should have beat New Mexico at New Mexico, although that's a tough venue. Yeah. But they felt like they should have won that game. In Oklahoma, they moved the ball very well. Just couldn't score in the red zone. Oklahoma shut them down there. Well, Nebraska will try it again from the seven-yard line. It's green again. It's up to the 25 to the 26-yard line now. Craig, you heard Mike Leach tell us the story about the 79 Cadillac DeVille. You got even more on it. Well, Ron, you're talking about what it looked like, blue and white, white and blue. This is what it looked like. It was a blue 79 Cadillac DeVille convertible, white leather seats, white convertible top. At least this is what it looked like when it was new. But I talked to his wife, Sharon. They bought it in Alabama and it was at the United States Sports Academy. They drove it to California for his first job, put a lot of miles on it. Everything was fine, except then he got a job in Iowa, Iowa Westland. So they drove it to Iowa even more miles. At that point, the top didn't fit very well against the top of the windshield. They didn't have the time or the money. Another interception, and he'll be happy on the sidelines. Well, maybe we can get the rest of the story in. They went to Iowa, and the snow would come in under the roof above the windshield and they have snow in their lap so he went to the hardware store and got that stuff that you fill in the cracks in your house and kind of sprayed <laughs> that in there at the top he still talks about that car to this day says how much he loves it i talked to his wife sharon she says that all he talks about so i went and got an old car trader and i found one he could get one for forty two hundred dollars the engine makes a little bit of noise the tires are a little bald but it's at 79 Cadillac DeVille, $4,200 over to Avenue Motors in case he wants to replace it. Oh, that and is he great, just signed Craig. a new contract, you know? I, I think he can afford it. How about yeah. that interception there? That's a great story. That was Dwayne Slay who got the interception. 
And yep. a big return and a new quarterback's in. Cody Hodges, the sophomore out of Hereford, Texas, has come in. Sonny Cumbie is done for the night. Well, they've hung more than a half a hundred on them. They're looking for some more. Incomplete. Hodges, second or third pass of the year. And we've got a, we got another official down at the five yard line. And that's the umpire Hugh Douglas. Oh my. But you just saw Cody Hodges come into the game. We talked about him as one of the you know building a team with the brothers. He has a brother on the team. He's the quarterback and we said that they won't stop their offense. It's exactly what's going on. He's going to continue to run offense because it's his opportunity to play. Take a look at it again. Watch at the end of the play, right in the middle, right in here. See right there? That Nebraska player unintentionally rolls up on the back leg of the umpire, Hugh Douglas. That's number 55, Wally Muhammad. Didn't mean it, didn't mean to do it. But the umpire's up, moving around a little bit, trying to walk it off. Well, I tell you, we've had two officials now go down. Well, back in 1968, Oklahoma beat Nebraska 47 to nothing, and that up until tonight has been the widest margin of a loss for Nebraska. Just a reminder, next week, we don't expect this type of fireworks, but we expect a dynamite game between Cal and UCLA. Maurice Strew can light it up. We've already seen him this year do it, and J.J. Arrington had a great game again today. 7 o'clock Eastern time. Next week will be at Cal Berkeley for the Bruins and the Bears. It's going to be fun. Maurice threw what, 322 yards at oh, Washington yeah. in Seattle, and they beat the Huskies. He can scamper, second down and six. Matt lost the football, got it back. Now he's got some space. Still has some space, and now he has a touchdown. Johnny Max, third touchdown of the night. When it's your night, it is truly your night. Watch this. Now, we're TBS, but our sister station, TNT, covers basketball. How about Johnny Mac double dribbling right there and then getting to the corner? And look at that great block on the corner by number 20, Danny Amendola. Walling off the corner on the inside, and Cody Hodges, number 10, was also out in front of the quarterback. Well, they add to the numbers. 9.05 still left in this ball game, and it's 63 to 10, Texas Tech. Texas Tech leading 63 to 10. 9.05 left to play in the fourth quarter. Johnny Mack, three touchdowns tonight. A little squid kick at the 11 yard line. Green takes a wallop right when he gets up to the 11 by Chad Johnson. Puts the wood to him. College football on TBS. Brought to you by Kia. Eight cars, one belief make every mile count. The Home Depot, go from wondering how to knowing how. At the Home Depot, you can do it, we can help. So we still have 8.59 to play in this ball game, but it has been all Texas Tech, but in the start of the third quarter, Nebraska took their opening possession down the field, and all of a sudden it was a 21-10 ball game. But then Texas Tech just came roaring back on both sides of the football, not just on the offensive side, but on the defensive side as well. Bo Davis, the young freshman quarterback, trying to get something going, getting some reps going here. Well, now we see our second official leaving, the umpire, Hugh Douglas. He's limping off. So we've lost our referee, John Laurie. Now we lost Hugh Douglas. And they told us coming into this game that Texas Tech wasn't the most physical team in the conference. Yeah. They're a, lot more, a lot more physical here at Jones SBC Stadium than people I'll gave credit you. for. And we certainly hope both officials are Absolutely. going to be okay and back on their feet and back on the field next week. They work awfully hard at what they do. Marshall Floor was in motion, and Nebraska will keep it on the ground. 
Tier Green, the redshirt freshman out of Omaha, Nebraska, Benson High School, the cousin of Amon Green. And I think, you know, you see a guy like Bill Callahan. He is a tremendous football coach, nine year hiatus from college. He's not going to stop coaching, my friends. He's going to get these guys going. He knows it's a long year. We've seen it. Uh, you know, we saw with Dennis Franchoni last year with Texas A&M. Hey, OK, we're going to take our licks, but our plan is in place and we're sticking with it. And don't think for a second that he's going to complain after the game that Tech tried to run up the score. But also don't think for a second that he won't remember this night in a big way. <laughs> and another interception. Sylvester Brinkley still on his feet. <laughs> Tough night for the true freshman Bo Davis. Look at from Bo Davis's perspective. Something one thing about young quarterbacks, they tend to lock in on one receiver. If you notice that his eyes and his head never moved. He was going to Ross Pilkington the whole way. And that's common for a young quarterback getting their first experience. And he just watched him. Sylvester Brinkley watched his eyes, moved into the right spot, and got the interception. Bill Callahan coaching up Bo Davis on the sideline. Telling him what he went through on the progression, something they'll continue to work on. Here comes Texas Tech, because you know that they're going to continue to run offense, even with Cody Hodges playing quarterback now. And Bo Davis had 40 touchdown passes his senior year of high school, so that young man's got some ability. Pass, penalty flag is thrown, is complete, and then dropped. Cody Hodges passes. Danny Amendola on the reception, but we do have a flag. Illegal participation, defense, 12 players on the field. Half the distance to the goal. Uh, no, I disagree with that. You, you allow a team 63 points, you should get another get an player. extra guy. Absolutely. <laughs> That's something. If we take a look at the possession chart for Nebraska, the last five possessions, Look, in the first half, they ran a lot of plays. Members 50 to 31 in terms of number of plays run in the first half in favor of Nebraska. Look at this. Three, four, five, six, and three is nine plays. And look at that. Fumble, interception. Fumble, interception, interception. Mm. Whole, uh, you know, it's a tale of two halves. Texas yeah. Tech getting the better of both halves. But this half is total domination. Only one first down in this half for Nebraska. It's amazing. And, and you know, and I, I can hear people now the disgruntlement with the West Coast offense, and that's not what we do at Nebraska. Mm -hmm. Folks, you've got to have patience. Give this man time to recruit, give this man time to get his offense going, and things will continue to get better at Nebraska. Remember, he took a team to the Super Bowl at the highest level. Oh, you yeah. think he can't coach? I guarantee you he can coach. Well, interceptions by an opponent. Back in 1954, Pitt had five against these Huskers tonight. Texas Tech has four, and you're not going to see a whole lot of a lot of smiles from people in that color red. And officials are going to stop it for a second. They got to move the chains. Team crews had a tough night too. I'm telling you, they, they really had a tough night. A lot of the, the loyal Nebraska fans, though, they travel with their team. They're with them through thick and thin. Yep. And I could find a lo more loyal group out there. Some of the best fans in the country. Without a doubt. And a shovel pass and another touchdown. And Texas Tech can get to 70 again. Henderson with the score. Double pass inside. Look at the blocking. There's 75 EJ Whitley getting downfield. Nice crease. Torian Henderson just handing, all, handing the ball over. What do they say? Act like you've been there before. Well, guess what? That's Texas Tech's move. been there a lot tonight. They can afford to act like they've been there before. And for the second time this year, Texas Tech hangs 70 on an opponent. They beat TCU 70 to 35. Now they're thumping Nebraska 70 to 10. Well, our pioneer play of the game. How about Hicks? That yeah. really started the barn burner going away, didn't it? Sonny Cumbie to Jared Hicks, a combination you're going to hear about often this season for Texas Tech. 
Now that was part of the scoring onslaught by Texas Tech and Bill Callahan has now seen his team give up 70 points. That's the most points given up by any team in Nebraska history. This will be their worst loss in the history of the program. And the pre the post game speech that Bill Callahan gives his team will be one of the most important speeches he will give as the head coach at Nebraska. Absolutely. What he says to him, what he says to them after the ball game and how he and his coaches approach these young men after the ball game is going to be a big determinant on how the rest of the season goes. I'm betting that he handles it very well and Nebraska bounces back and still has a good season. 114 years of football at Nebraska. on the bottom of your screen and we will have a complete update right after our game. And again it is green. To the 30 yard line and they have not had much luck on any kind of returns tonight. Joe Garcia on the stop. College football on TBS brought to you by Kia. Eight cars, one belief, make every mile count. The Home Depot, go from wondering how to knowing how. At the Home Depot, you can do it, we can help. Pioneer Pure Vision Plasma displays the purest color, the purest experience. And PlayStation 2, live in your world, play in ours. Now they're playing for pride. Brandon Jackson, the true freshman, we saw him run a couple of times in that opening half. Showed a lot of promise. But what's going to happen now is the Nebraska coaches, when they grade game film, mm -hmm. they're going to be grading guys on how they play in this situation. Oh, yeah. Did they continue to play hard? Did they continue to try and execute their assignments? Or did they hang their heads and give in a little bit? The guys who don't give in are the guys that they know they can count on down the road. Yes, and has seven carries for 29 yards tonight. Taking a couple of hits as he gets close to the 40-yard line. Texas Tech's defenders just flying all over the field right now. They're feeling it. Once again, they've been alternating 10 defensive linemen, Texas Tech has. That keeps guys fresh when it comes to this time of the game. It does, and they get to feed off of each other, and they see guys out on the field making good plays. So when they get out there, they want to do the same thing because they know they'll be graded. They want to hold up their end of the bargain. Knocked back inside the 35-yard line. You know, the couple of things that... Uh, Texas Tech talks about defensively. They always talk about us alignment, assignment, technique, and execution. This is all four rolled All up. four rolled into one. And watch Chad Hill, number 54, a redshirt freshman linebacker, able to shoot the gap because the defensive line took away all the blocking for Nebraska. Kind of stripped it. He's able to shoot the gap and make a big hit in the backfield. Coronado High School right here in Lubbock. And they're going to have to kick it away. Fourth down and four. And Mandola standing back at his 20-yard line, kicking with the wind. Trying to get Tech to jump offside. Also trying to take as much clock off as they possibly yeah, yeah. can. They want this thing to get to zero as fast as possible. Amendola from the 13-yard line. Gets up to the 15, 51 yards on the kick. Ernie Johnson, I hope Florida State's a little bit closer than this one. Came right down to it in the closing second. Syracuse still had a shot, Ron, and Perry Patterson throwing to the end zone where Sam McGrew picked it off for FSU, and the Seminoles win at 17-13. Now let's get back to Lubbock before Texas Tech scores again. <laughs> Optimism at its best, isn't it? Tough, tough one for Paul Pasqualoni, the coach at Syracuse. There you can see 59 or 49 points in the second half for Texas Tech. To seven for Nebraska, and that came on Nebraska's first series of the half. Mm -hmm. The pass to Mark LaFleur, man coverage, took off the tackle and went 80 yards for a touchdown. And the clock cannot move fast enough for Nebraska, and that'll stop it. Pass intended for Bishop. Our first and ten line is brought to you by Home Depot. Texas Tech hasn't bothered stopping when they got to the first and ten. No, line they haven't. Right? You know, it's interesting though. If we go back, think back now as we look at Mike Leach observing the handiwork of his team. 
Lafleur scores the touchdown to start the second half for Nebraska. Remember? Yeah. Then the black shirts in Nebraska held Tech and forced a punt, and they had the ball again. The mm -hmm. chance to gain some momentum didn't happen. Tech took charge from that moment on. And Nebraska had an opportunity early in the second half. They got away. Cody Hodges throws it out of the flat. Pass is complete up to the 21-yard line. Cody Hodges pass complete to number 83. Craig Sager, one of the part of the history here at Lubbock is the masked rider, and you've got one of them with you. Not only have one of them, I have the original one. We talked about the masked rider. We showed the rider and also the horse. It all started 50 years ago when this man, Joe Kirk Felton, took a mask, a hat, a red cape, hopped on Blackie, and rode out into the Gator Bowl. 50 years later, the tradition continues. Are you surprised this last that long has been that successful? I had no idea when I did it that it would be like this, but uh, obviously I'm very proud to have been part of the tradition. The first time you did, were you afraid you can get arrested? No. <laughs> Why? Why not? Oh, they, they were a little more liberal in those days. <laughs> this horse was named Blackie. The Gator Bowl final score was Texas Tech 35, Auburn 13. Started tradition. 27 of the riders are here tonight. What's it been like for you guys all to get together and talk about the experiences you've had? It's been very enjoyable because I've known quite a few of them. Well, how dangerous is it? We saw it tonight when the mass rider was supposed to lead the team out, but the horse got a little spooked and didn't come out. Are there been moments like that? <clears throat> no, I didn't have. I was very fortunate. You got a good horse named Blackie. Yes, sir. Sure did. Well, this horse tonight got kid, uh, quite a workout, Brian, because they're going up and down the sidelines every time they scored. Yeah. And this horse is already going to the locker room. <laughs> <laughs> well, Texas Tech will kick it away. At the 40 yard line, red shirts flying all over the place. You, you know, talking with Mr. Felton there, and we see the statue of the masked rider atop his loyal steed, whatever the name would be at each different time. It reminds me of when I went to Tennessee. I went there in 1982, and Tennessee played USC out in the Coliseum in 1981, the year Marcus Allen won the Heisman. <laughs> and they always ride, they always sprint traveler around the track. Remember, the old Coliseum had the track around it. They always sprint a traveler around the track every time USC did something good. They had yeah. to retire poor traveler by halftime that day because yeah. <laughs> they were beating my ball so bad. I think it was 42 to 7 was the final. And they said traveler was all foamed up. They had to say, okay, enough, enough for you tonight. Marcus Allen went for 200 something yards and traveler went for a lot more. <laughs> I remember the Sooner Schooner did that at OU. They had to just take the horses and put them away for the night. <laughs> enough two, for you guys. Two minutes and 48 seconds. <laughs> Texas Tech led 21 to 3 at halftime. Just a reminder, you can all the scores and highlights for the Dodge Post Game Reporter. Ernie Johnson will catch you up on all the action today. Mark Fine will give you the inside scoop on that OU Texas game, and Darren Elliott will catch you up on what happened at Cal USC. Came down to the last play of the game, and Cal just could not pull it off. We'll have all that scores and highlights coming up on the Dodge Post Game Report with Ernie Johnson right after our game in two minutes and 17 seconds. Unless somebody calls a timeout, <laughs> and they did. And they did. Texas Tech called the timeout. Now that's something I think if I'm a head coach, I get mad about. Well, I don't mind I, you playing your offense, but come on. Yeah, but I don't think they called a timeout because they're trying to stop them per se. I think they called a timeout because they were substituting so many different guys that they had confusion on who was in the game and who wasn't. Yeah. I don't think it was, you know, I really don't think they meant any disrespect on this one. Just a matter of, okay, we have to have 11 guys out there and lined up in the proper spots, and they didn't have them. You know, in the last series for Texas Tech, Cody Hodges in the game, member Home Depot building yep. a team. He th we completed a pass to his brother, Slade Hodges. I so like we that. saw that building a team earlier in the game, and we just saw an example of the, the brothers working together. That'll work. This will be the first victory for Texas Tech over Nebraska. Texas Tech was the only team in the Big 12 in Texas Tech history never to have beaten the Huskers. 0-7 coming into the night. And Bo Davis, oh, baptism by fire tonight. And the fire's been hot, too. And he's going to put it up. And it is complete. Now to the 45-yard line. 
Inside the 45 to the 43 yard line, David Horn, who was a big star in this Nebraska offense back in 2002, and that's his first touchdown tonight for the junior from Omaha. Very physical guy, and a couple of years ago, we thought he was the next great high back for the Cornhuskers. Yeah, I talked with some observers of the Nebraska program, and they told me the biggest problem David Horn has had has been work ethic. Mm -hmm. And if you don't work at it, a place like Nebraska, where most people do, that's how you end up fourth on the depth chart. You've got to find a way to increase that and work his way back into the mix. Well, off the hands of Amos, almost another interception. Let's take a look at some of the scores today. Adrian Peterson, AD, all day, and he did run all day as Texas beat Oklahoma, Oklahoma State. Les Miles just has him winning, 42-14. Yeah. And they're really growing up with their quarterback how, there, Donovan how, Woods. How about in Manhattan, Kansas? That'll be a huge win for Mark Mangino. If he's able to pull out, it's a big game right there, Kansas State, Kansas, the Sunshine State. Yeah, excuse me, the Sunflower State game. And his Franchoni keeps winning at A&M. And that was one I think we talked about individually. Nice run inside there. I think that's David Horn again. And we talked about that being a danger game for Texas A&M yeah. because they're building a program back. And they've had two big wins in the last three weeks. And going on the road at Iowa State where they play awfully hard, that's a nice win for Coach Franchoni and his, and his club. Now this Texas Tech team has scored 49 points in the second half. That ties for most ever, most points ever in the second half. That goes back to the TCU game earlier this year. So you have Nebraska with most points scored on them, worst loss, and most points in the second half. Records are falling. Overshadowing the accomplishment of Garrett Rude, the linebacker from Nebraska. Horn bounces out to the outside. This is important for him. May only be a couple of carries, but he's got to prove to Coach Callahan that he should be in the lineup and getting some reps back there. We've got somebody down on the field, a Nebraska player. Looks like it's Jake Anderson, the big right guard. And that's a guy they can't afford to lose. He's their leader on the offensive front. Terrific player for him as Coach Callahan goes out to check on him. He's a guy that they have to have down yeah. the stretch. Provides tremendous leadership as well as terrific play. And he is flat on his stomach. You know, you talk to Coach Callahan, he knows about this Nebraska tradition, so he's hurting just as much as everybody tonight. He told us the other day that he researched everything about Nebraska before he even went in for his interview. He understood the tradition. He says he doesn't feel any pressure. He says he applies it to himself. He said getting the program back is an awesome responsibility, but he understood the challenge before he even went in for his interview for this job. Yeah, as we look at the stat that you had mentioned, the worst loss previously, 47 to nothing to Oklahoma in 1968, and most points allowed. That was the game against Colorado in Boulder. Where they gave up 62 and ended up playing for the national title when yeah. the BCS bashers came out in force for that one. Oh, yeah. You know, that was, so we look at that, but Bill Callahan, as you mentioned, researched and did his homework before he went in for the job. Steve Peterson, athletic director, talked about how tremendous his interview was, that he knew what was going on in Nebraska. He knew the people. He knew what was going on. He knew the traditions. He knew how it worked. And that really impressed him. And Bill Callahan has kept the black shirts, the tradition black shirts on defense. He kept the traditional eye back in his offense, even though his terminology was different than what he normally runs. But he knew the tradition was there, so he still calls it an eye back. The walk-on program has been reduced but it has mm -hmm. not been eliminated. That's right. He just said we have to reduce it so that we can work better because if you have too many guys running around, you can't get the proper work in for the people you need. And so, I, so and ironically, he, his son is a walk-on. His son's a walk-on. And it, what he said was, I understand walk-on. My son's doing it out That's there. Right. We'll get to see Brian Callahan next week when we go out there for the UCLA Cal game. And it's good to see Jake Anderson up oh boy, and on his good. feet. That's good to see. Well, the last three coaches for Nebraska in their first year all won nine games. You go back to Bob Devaney, a couple of national titles in 70, 71, eight league titles, and he handed the reins off to Tom Osborne, three national championships, 13 conference titles, gave it up then to Frank Solich. He was actually at the OU Texas game today. He won the Big 12 championship in 99. And played for two national championships. That's right. Right? That's Did right. he get in twice to play for mm -hmm. it? And now the reins belong to Bill. 64 seconds left. This will be one of the biggest wins in Texas Tech history. Probably since the days of Spike Dykes when he beat Texas on this field. Now let's take a look and see what Nebraska has coming up straight ahead for them. 
after tonight they play Baylor at home and then they have to go to Kansas State and then they have Missouri at home at Iowa State at Oklahoma and Colorado you mentioned all those three coaches that won nine games their first year this will make Nebraska three and two when you look at the schedule the rest of the way the only game that you look at that you would say they're an overwhelming favorite at this point right Baylor because they're at Kansas State Missouri's a home game Missouri might be favored in that one Pass is intercepted. Another interception for the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Jamal Jackson, the senior from Bruce, Mississippi. Five interceptions by Texas Tech. That ties the record by an opponent of Nebraska. So Jamal Jackson, number 18 in red, reads the pattern. Isaiah Flewellen, the ball, if he'd been thrown inside, gives Flewellen a chance to make a play on it, but when it's thrown outside, he had to drift right into the coverage of Jackson. The fifth interception of the evening for the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Yeah, there's some celebrating in Lubbock tonight. 38 seconds left. And they can really enjoy it because guess what? They don't play next week. They got next week off. And then they get ready for University of Texas. The Longhorns come to town. The last time they played in Lubbock, Texas Tech won it 42 to 38. And I believe that cost the University of Texas a spot in the BCS. They would have been one of the teams that was in. And that's always a huge rivalry game. There it is right there, Texas coming to town. And then they're at Kansas State, Baylor at home, at Texas A&M and Oklahoma State. Not an easy schedule down the stretch. The Big 12, as always, a very difficult conference. Well, five interceptions by Texas Tech tonight. That ties the school record for most interceptions. Tough night for Bill Callahan and Mike Leach. They do shake hands, but Texas Tech goes to four and two on the year, two and one in conference play. A very convincing win. They played well on both sides of the football. Nebraska falls to three and two, one and one in the Big 12 conference. Sonny Cumbie played a great game tonight, and he is with our Craig Sager. Gentlemen. Well, a lot of great quarterbacks in the country. A lot of people talking about the Pac-10 quarterbacks and other places around the country, but you lead everybody. Another great performance, 70 points, five touchdowns. Why are you able to make it look so easy tonight? We've got great 10 other players around me that are great. We've got a great coaching system, and, uh, uh, you know, Coach Leach is, uh, has a knack for making uh, great calls at the right time, and uh, he did that tonight, and uh, the guys up front just, you know, play their tails off, and I can't say enough about the 10 other guys that I'm out there on the field with. You talk about the system. You had to play behind Cliff Kingsbury and also B.J. Simmons. What did you learn watching those two great quarterbacks? Well, I learned how to come out and execute like this and uh, how to handle adversity. And uh, we had a little bit tonight. We bounced back. And I owe a lot of the success I have this season to those two guys. And, uh, you know, I, I love them both. Well, he's number one in all the charts right now. And uh, no Heisman hype right now. But a week off and Texas coming up. Who knows? Maybe this is our next Heisman candidate, Ron. <laughs> tell, tell, tell Sonny we'll start it for him. Now the final score, 70 to 10. Texas Tech defeats the Nebraska Cornhuskers. College football on TBS continues next Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern as the Cal Bears host the UCLA Bruins. For Charles Davis, Craig Sager, and the rest of the crew, I'm Ron Thulin saying good night from Lubbock, Texas. Now it's time for the Dodge Post Game Show with Ernie Johnson.